you the teeth. Okay. <laughs> Nate can get us some teeth. Hello and welcome to Dragon Poet Society. Uh, I'm Nicholas, resident DM, and we're back, finally, uh, from a bit of a cavalcade of delays and uh, other situational events, but um, we're back and ready and rolling, so we're going to kick, kick back into uh, our resumed campaign of Lumoria. So, um, we'll just pick right up with the where we left off recap and kind of going to be a little bit longer just to catch us all back up um, from the situation that we were in before. Um, but when last we left off, the party was determined to rescue their friends. Um, we had Cackler and Flo missing in action um, and under captivity from the nefarious noble named Folian the Fox. After a hunt for information and allying with the vengeful pirate Captain Brixton Blackmist, who had in fact ordered uh, the and arranged the, their allies' capture in the first place before being ambushed by Folian, uh, the group met with the mysterious Smiling Gentleman at the wondrous theater of the Mast Palace, courtesy of a well-connected local shopkeeper named Julius Nakavir. With a plan to strike at Folian's house, the Quipper Mansion, uh, during a brief window when the smiling gentleman promised to neutralize its defenses in a particular area, uh, the group rested back at Tenille's Uncle Galen's manor in the Jewels Ward, despite Uncle Gal Galen's current absence. Uh, the party learned a bit more about Captain Blackmist and his relationship with uh, Folian and Flo. They also saw that Captain Blackmist got on famously with uh, Tenille's family and Anetka's mother, Bria, who seemed to have some sort of previous interaction with the captain. Uh, upon the next turning, the group struck at the Quipper Mansion's third floor uh, at the agreed-upon time with the Smiling Gentleman's aid. There they hoped to gain access to Folian the Fox's infamous and feared Brimstone Den, where it was rumored he keeps his slaves, prisoners, and other nefarious trade items. Entering in, the group encountered two powerful suits of armor that battled them and attempted to push them out the window or into the strange fires that burned magically within the third floor space. Eventually, with the aid of Captain Blackmist, the team defeated the armor at their, um, beating them at their own game by pushing them into the strange fires. The group then searched the third floor, which turned out to be a strange study or library uh, filled with books and other knickknacks and, as well, uh, and several doors hidden behind the walls of flame that were on parts of the area. With no safe way of reaching these doors, uh, the group searched about for other options and uncovered a book that contained a magical portal to the Brimstone Den. Upon their entrance to this desperately hot and strange place, with its carved walls and several prisoners in barbed cells, they found their two missing companions being prepared for imprisonment by Folian himself, who seemed personally interested in Flo and professionally interested in the future of Cackler. Confronting the cruel nobleman head-on turned out to be, a danger to be dangerous in the extreme, for he was quite capable with sorcery and was able to freeze each of the party members and destroy Captain Blackmist, who it turns out was Folian's son, with a single spell. Before the party met the, safe, the same fate, however, uh, a strange voice seemed to rebuke and hold Folian back, preventing him from directly assailing the party. So instead, Folian used his magic to raise the corpse of Captain Blackmist, from the dead and watched invisibly as the party struggled against Flo's former ship captain. Eventually, the group was successful in their battle and quickly exited the den through the strange through a strange portal uh, that they found as Folian snapped in bestial anger at their heels while the voice again seemed to hold him back. Now they emerge in a musty and dusty basement, or what seems to be a basement, made of old wooden planks and Got some creaking sounds kind of coming from up ahead, up above. The party is left with the body of a dead zombie captain um, and all of its belongings, as, one, as well as wondering thoughts of where they might be, what to make of their encounter with Folian, and how long they were gone, given their looming de deadline to also recover the missing magical lumens from way back, from the disgruntled, disgruntled uh, terra fleas. Yes, disgruntled. <laughs> the disgruntled power play. Um, but in any case, that is where we are picking up. Everyone's seeming quite worse for wear, quite beaten, and uh, how's everyone looking after that whole encounter? Still look like a, still look like a thank you. <laughs> That's good. Um, Unlike you did for a while. You didn't look like yourself for a while. I did. Dog ears. I did. I didn't. No. Um, 
Is there any light in this room? Is there any light in this room? Yeah. There is not. Um, it is completely dark, but for you know, the stuff you're able to see yourself um, in via dark vision, getting some like dim outlines of different uh, areas. It's a pretty uh, crowded space with all of you there. Um, seems like there's outlines of some crates, um, and then there, it looks like there's stairs leading up and a door. Um, it does look like there's a little bit of maybe torchlight or lantern light coming from the top of like the door crack. Um, um, but it seems to have like a kind of dimish gray hue to it as well, the light. Does the room feel like it's moving at all? Um, it does not. You don't feel like it's moving or adjusting, as far as you can tell. Like a ship. Because we just fought a pirate. Um, I'm going to make my way up, up the stairs towards <laughs> the door and just kind of push my ear against it and listen for any sounds outside. Okay. Go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. Well, she's already up against the door. Um, so... Uh, the, you can check the door itself when she's finished, but go ahead and make an investigation uh, and just hold the roll for a second. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, you're definitely hearing some like creaking foot, like booted footfalls and stuff like that. Um, it seems that the whoever it is is rather light on their feet, um, but with that roll, you at least got some information. Uh, it sounds like an individual who's like packing, not in a hurry or a rush, but um, you're kind of hearing the like clinking of a few like glass bottles and stuff. You're hearing like a of like a, a crate or chest being opened and then shut and some buckle like of like buckles being um, set up and stuff like that. Um, so that's all you're hearing at the moment. Okay. Um, there's definitely a like distinct, like, I don't know, you're not quite able to place it, but like a, um, it definitely doesn't smell good. In okay. this area, um, there it seems like there's like a musty, um, almost like a, um, like a musk or or some other kind of uh, animalistic smell uh, to it. You're also hearing, um, sorry, you're also smelling um, what smells like um, human waste and um, like dried vomit or something like that. Oh, and that's just sleep. <laughs> and you said the light is like. Grayish. Yeah, it's got like a grayish tinge to it. Um, it's more uh, easy on your eyes. Okay. Um, so it doesn't seem to be lumen powered or anything. It's not like sunlight. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't remember who said this, so I know I'm going to say it's wrong with it. Uh, I ain't see oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you can't get a dark vision? Uh, I will. Um... I don't want to do this. Someday I will. Oh. <laughs> Flo's like reaching for a wall. So I'm going to cast, uh, I'm just trying to remember if I can like modulate dancing light so it's like dimmer and not super bright. But I, don't, I know I can do that with the lights, light cantrip. I don't know if I can do it with dancing lights as a cantrip. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you can probably dim it to a certain a amount so that it's at light. least, you know. Single dancing light, yeah. Yeah, I'll hold my hand a little singular dancing light. Yeah, okay. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it, sure. Okay. For at least at least in this case. Um, okay. You know. Yeah, you're... so I'll, I'll do that. I'll kind of like, and I'll send, because I think it's like you get four lights and I'll kind of send them up into the corners and try to make them. Yeah, it's do not it. a very tall ceiling. Okay. Um, it's actually pretty close to, to slates. Like slate, you're having to like duck your head a little bit. So it's about a, it's about a, um, like an eight foot, eight and a half foot ceiling. So it's not, it's uh, not quite as conducive to uh, to a slate. So what happened if I just teleported in there and I'm already taller than the space? Um, you you there was physical room for you to fit. It was just sort of like that you came in hunched as you came in. Sorry. So and the, the the traces of the portal behind uh, have vanished. You see a little like clump of like little what looked like hairs or something like that um, at the floor of where it was. I can't go and grab those hairs. And uh, one yeah, of they, the, they, they, they seem to be dissolving like into nothingness as you as you touch them. Uh, one of the the lights materializes on the cackler's beak nose. <laughs> is, it, is it dancing? Sure. Let's go. All right. Just be like rotating around your beak. Yes. Be and obviously you're all, you're uh, <laughs> nice. I like it. Uh, you're also obviously accompanied by the stench of rotten dead flesh. It seems like. Uh, 
Captain Blackmist's body, whatever the spell that Folian did to him was, it seems to have, like, instantly rotted the body, instantly, like, decayed it and accelerated it into, like, this zombified state. So, um, he's still sort of wearing, like, his cloak and, or his coat and, um, other things, but otherwise is sort of, after the, the beating that his undead form took, also sort of, like, kind of squelchy and semi-attached. Is gonna turn towards the capillary flow and just go, don't, don't do that again. Like I decided to. I, I don't have that many friends. I, I can't lose <laughs> you two. And kind of distractedly, she's gonna uh, loot and leave it. Uh, I'm just gonna look at you. I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, punch you in the shoulder. <laughs> uh, okay, so I heard that you were trying to loot, loot the cabinet. Yes. Okay, so go ahead and make an investigation check. Um, did we get your investigation for... Did you make you made the roll for the traps checking? 19. 19. Uh, it does not appear like this door is trapped. Um, as far as you can tell, it seems to be unlocked as well. Nice. Cool. 16. 16? Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, you've got the gear that you saw Captain Blackmist use. Um, you have uh, what looks like his, his uh, short sword, um, which seems to have, like, its... Um, Slightly curved at the end, um, but otherwise seems like a, a normal uh, short sword. It's um, like the sheath that it comes with seems to be sort of like a crusted with seaweed and brine. Um, and you draw the sword just like a little bit, um, and you can see it's got quite a bit of like brine and like almost like salt crust on the on the sword itself. Um, we've got his eye patch, which as you remove it, it has like a stitched and woven. Um, uh, purplish thread that uh, on the black cloth that's uh, in in the design of an eye and is moving on its own, as if it was like an actual orbital uh, eye. And you find his um, unusually shaped uh, and colored coin um, that you saw him flip a couple times, um, and it seems to be separated from his actual coin purse, um, which I'll get to in a second. Um, let's see, we've got that. We have, um, the sort of club that was, like, flanged open at the end, um, that he had used before, um, to trigger, like, a, like, a shockwave effect out of it. Um, so he has that. Um, let's see. Then, amidst his various, um, let's see, amidst, amidst all that, he also has numerous, um, bottles, like potion bottles, in his, uh, in his coat. A couple of them are emptied. Uh, a few of them are um, of unusual like sizes and, and variations and stuff. Um, you see one that seems to be sort of uh, roiling or steaming. It's kind of a reddish orange in color. Um, you see another one which is like a tiny bead, um, and it seems to like expand and then contract to the bead again, and then expand and then contract. Um, and you see a couple of um, sort of more still-looking uh, red potions as well, a pair of them. As for the money, um, it looks like uh, you've got a total of uh, six platinum, um, 39 gold, and 17 silver. Uh, otherwise, it seems like he didn't... He's got the remnants of like the armor that he was wearing, but it's pretty torn up. It looks like it was leather. Um, his coat, again, and his hat, you know, um, that kind of stuff. You... Uh, can pick up if you want. Um, they're sized for, uh, you know, rather large and well-built human um, and stuff like that. The hat is sort of uh, classic, like, captain's trifoil hat, um, but with, like, a stylish pink-purple feather um, in it. Um, and, yeah, his coat is a little bit, like, hat. darker. Um, his, his, <laughs> his coat is, like, a dark uh, blue-purple-black kind of uh, thing. It has, like, little skulls as uh, mm -hmm. the buttons. He also looks sad. <laughs> okay, so you guys are spending a little while doing that. Um, uh, it was six platinum, thirty-nine gold, eleven silver. I think it's at seventeen. 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 Okay. Um, she'll give one platinum to each of them, and then we'll work. We'll, let's. I'm trying. I'm trying to do math. The Natka would do this very 
So 39 gold. So it'd be six gold each, um, and then there'd be three left over. Gold each. She'll give the extra three to Tanil since he's been doing a lot of bribing. And she'll explain he's been doing a lot of bribing. Wouldn't it be seven gold each? Four? 39, 39 gold? Yeah, six of I... you. Oh, there's... there's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a uh, there. Yeah. Um, so, um, go ahead and make a medicine check there, Anetka, while you're also uh, doing that. Let me look at something over here. Uh, seven. Seven, hey? Um, look at that. Okay. Hey, great. Um, seven? Okay, yeah. Kind of just a pretty rotted um, body at that point. Um, but, uh, yeah. You mean we can't bring him back? Yeah, pretty, ro- pretty rotted body. Um, uh, but, uh, noticing that it's, like, much, it rotted much quicker, could I kind of, like, look, take a look at it? Sure. In what context? Are you trying to see, like, how it happened? Yeah, or like, is it what mag- it's state? magical in nature kind of situation, I guess? I mean, you saw, like, the, go ahead and make either uh, Medicine or Arcana. Um, I mean, you saw, like, that bolt of, like, jagged black light, light, like, strike at him, and then immediately his flesh started to dissolve and, like, decay. So you reasonably, you, you saw that it was magic. Well, I rolled a nat one for a total of five, so... She did I, not, he did not sure. see it was magic. Okay. I did not see that magic. Um, but I did want to kind of look at Flo as, like, we're going over, like, are you okay with this? She's, like, completely silent. She's gonna walk over to Captain Black Mist, take out her scimitar and drive it through him, and then slump down and start crying. Awkwardly pat you on the back. <laughs> I'll like flinch against it, but just like still sit there. I don't think there's any decent issues there. Um, I, I think maybe get her to some place she can sleep, and then I think we need to talk, and then she'll just uh, choose silver to each of you. She will keep the extra five for herself because I've also been bribing a lot of people. Okay, so while you guys are rummaging around and talking, um, not leave all the magic stuff. And I, was like descri- I was describing all the stuff that you were grabbing. grabbing. Okay, so we were taking that. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, they break in and you leave the stuff. Oh, no, we're, we're, no, um, we're So you're, you're hearing, um, you hear sort of like a uh, unusual language um, that... Um, uh, do I know it? Um, <laughs> you're talking to a group of Yeah, linguists. you guys do have quite a few linguists uh, among you. Um, uh, Cackler, yes, sir. Tenille, and Slate, what languages do you guys know? I know Elvish and Common, that's it. Okay. I know. Orin, common, undercommon, infernal, dwarvish, elvish. Okay, celestial. this isn't undercommon. This is, this is undercommon? Undercommon. Oh, so, no, undercommon, but anyway. Um, so, uh, you, you hear uh, someone like, oh, I'm, uh, like, I must leave. Like, uh, kind of like reacting to the, like, situation that they're hearing down below. Um, and then you hear, like, a different... Not uh, any, any sort of like, oh crap, you know, kind of like startled, uh, quickly like grabbing a few extra things, and then you hear um, what sounds like um, either a language you don't recognize, or maybe like a chant or a prayer, some kind of like spell language, um, and you hear like a thud, 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 of like door opened, door shut. Um. I'm gonna- so I'm going to walk up to the door, like the door that's in our room, and mm-hmm. I'm going to open it. Okay, you open it. Um, it opens to a wide, what looks like warehouse area. So ascending up the stairs from the basement, you've got this wide warehouse area. It's more or less rectangular. Um, it's got like a secondary floor with a balcony, uh, stairs leading up, um, and... Um, Actually, that's my bad. Um, you, uh, I can't, I can't believe it. I just uh, totally blanked on this. But you get up there, total darkness. You can't see anything. But I have a. It only lasts dude. for a minute. Um. Uh, can you get up there, total, just like total darkness. Yeah. Can, can you? Do you want someone who can see up there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm assuming I've heard yes at some point. Yes, now. you have heard yes. Um, <laughs> You've heard of affirmations before, yes. And I assume you maybe broke down and communicated what you heard. Nope. Uh, okay. Do you think there's any magic up there? See, the, pro- the problem is if I was going to repeat it, it would be in undertone. Well, I mean, like, broke down. Like. Oh. No, I, I would have just gone. 
Okay. Yeah, I would say it's probably unlikely he had enough time to quickly yeah. Yeah, that's... write down all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Uh, um, do, you, do we think there'd be any magic up there? I, I would take ten minutes, but I could get like, you know, get my drop spindle out. Um. I have an idea. Okay. Standing in the doorway, can I repeat like? So you said he's let out like some sort of like potentially spell thing. Can I like perfectly mimic what he said? Um, I would say in this case, no, because it's not, um, you can mimic some of the, like, overall sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, you didn't hear it perfectly, like it was muffled for the first place. Um, and in the second, I would say, um, like, you were able to con- I would say you are able to convey that there was some kind of spellcasting sound being made. Mm -hmm. That I would say for sure. No, I I was just trying to mimic his spell, whatever happened. See what happened, see what happened. Yeah, I would say you don't- you didn't hear the full, like- Syntax of the spell. That's valid. Um, but you can at least share that there was like some effect there. Um, so while that's all going on, Renostis, I haven't heard from you. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, in the room that I'm in, I would like to approach the wall and start running my fingers um, around the wall, just looking for any hidden doors or hidden compartments. Sure. Go ahead and make an investigation check. There's two crates in there with you guys. Oh, okay. Um... Maybe I'll those but as far as for that, it's going to be an eight. Uh, you do not find any secret compartments or hidden doors or anything like that. Okay. Uh, so, well, I guess it's dim light in there. Um, I am going to go... Are you recasting Dancing Lights there, Felina? Enough? I'm assuming someone's keeping light active in the yeah, room. Yeah, I'll recast it, but if I noticed um, Chirps going up to the door, I would go ahead and kind of like... Yeah, the door up top is open now. Um, I'd go up Kako's and kind of like... staring there. Grab a part of him and cast Eyes of Night, and you get an hour of 300 foot of dark vision. Let's go. Okay, now so you do that? Uh, yes, you still cannot see. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, Dancing Lights is up too, so. Okay, you can at least see in the room down below, and you can see yeah, yeah, quite yeah. clearly I'm now. Not blind. You're not blinded, but the area up above is shrouded in darkness. Am I looking just through like a normal doorway, like I'm at level with this, or am I looking through a trap door? You're looking through an at-level door. You went up some stairs, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then this is, you surmise that this is actually a basement yeah. built below ground into... Uh, for this warehouse area. Well, this well, I don't know it's a warehouse area. Yeah, you do not, yeah. <laughs> you have a su- sneaking suspicion. You're not sure where that came from, I though. smell <laughs> warehouse. Yeah. That warehouse is... So, what's everyone like else... There's a forklift in here. What's everyone else doing? Uh, Annette's going to bring out her drop spindle, start spinning and moving it around the room, and uh, Ritual cast Detect Magic. Okay, so you spend ten minutes doing that. While she's doing that, what's everyone else doing? So Renastus popped a squat on one of the crates, and then almost realizing how silly that is, uh, he will get up immediately and look inside the crate, or try to pry it open if it's... Yeah, it is shut, but you can go ahead and make a strength check if you'd like to use, like, a tool or something if that you might have um, that could help. Oh, yeah. obviously, obviously, a crowbar would be, like, the ideal, but if you have any other tool that would help. carpenter's tools. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd say at least that would help. Um, so go ahead and make a strength Probably check. Probably, like, a chisel, try to um, leverage it. Yeah. So a strength check is not my... Uh, forte, but that would be a 12. 12, yeah, that'll do it. So it's like, <coughs> and it jerks open, and you sort of push the, the top of it open. Um, there's like lots of straw or like hay inside, um, like packing, as like packing material. Um, you see a few empty um, uh, glass vials, um, looks like, with like cork stoppers um, in varying sizes. Um, also seems like there's a couple of, um, like extra long, uh, forceps. Um, they're probably about two feet long. Don't mind if I do. I don't <laughs> pocket both the vials and the forceps. I'll like, I've got my backpack, so I'll kind of like slide it in my backpack. Yeah. Um, you also get that sense, uh, sorry, one other thing, um, actually never mind. That's my bad. Um. A little frazzled today. Oh, uh, Annette would have take, made a point to take some of the empty potion vials from Black Mist as well as just because she needs more vials. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. she hates collecting shit. There, there's another three empty vials that you would have grabbed from it. And I'll, like, kind of wipe some sweat from my forehead, but if anyone want to help me with this second crate? I'll do it. Okay. Are you washing up top? Oh, yeah. I'll stay up top. You, you can do it. I'll do it. <laughs> And I'll hand him my chisel or whatever 
Cool. Okay, go ahead and make a strength check, Slate. Strong. We'll see. So excited about those forceps. Where do you ever find two foot long forceps? In a crate. In a crate? Mm-hmm. crate? In a warehouse? 19? Okay, crate this one. Not, warehouse. not a problem, just like. And then the blood goes. Like, as you just, like, chip it off. Um, inside, like, the smell of just, like, rock reeking death just. Uh, reach like comes up. Uh, you actually notice that this looks like it had some kind of um, like ice packed at the bottom of it um, to preserve uh, what looks like a lot of dead mice and rats. Nice. Um, you surmise maybe it was kept down here because colder and smell. Valid. Uh-huh. But like there's probably a good like 15 dead mice and rats. <laughs> I'm gonna send one of my orbs out into the darkness. Does it do anything? As it like, as it gets to about the thresh, just a little bit past where Cackler's uh, goes, it just whoosh, disappears. Okay. The You're just a, f- filled in darkness. No, they're they're semi. They're like reasonably preserved. Um, okay. Like probably at least half of them are rotted, um, but some of them are, are definitely still like somewhat fresh. Okay. Dead rat. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. Yes. Today's yes. going great already. Found some forceps. Are you grabbing the dead rat with the forceps? That would be a very intelligent thing to do. However, I didn't think about that. And I think Rhinosis would have just grabbed the dead rat. Yeah, he just like pick it up by the tail. Um, and for a second, it like, tail comes off and you have to like oh, grab no. the, the, just like the form. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you got a dead rat. Um, it's killer loot right there. <laughs> yeah, potions. Have you ever wondered, you know, you know, there's always these scenarios where like, I wonder what the effect of this would be on flesh. Now I have flesh. Nice. I mean... Yeah? For now, until it rots. I mean, I wired, why are dead rats here on ice? They're obviously for experiments. True. Or food. I mean... No judgment. I, I feel like I'm the last person who can judge you on that one. I feel like we come across flesh, though, a lot in our lifestyle. I'm just saying, guys, when life hands you dead rats... Make dash dead rat an aid. Pick them off. Dead 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 off. Uh, wait, yep. Nicholas, so they can't see me right now, correct? No, they cannot. Okay, I'm gonna, from the void, just start, like, ominously uh, chirping down to them. <laughs> <laughs> ominously chirping. <laughs> okay. Uh... Do you have a death witch chirp? <laughs> <laughs> we could have saved her. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what's happening um, from up above. What's uh, what's Flo doing? Are you still like crying and out of it, or are you just like overwhelmed? Are you kind of coming back to it? What's your what's your status? All over the place. Sure. Um, We've all been there. Does he still have? <laughs> The clothing, or did anybody take the? Seeing you cry, I would have left it. Okay, oh. I'm gonna quickly like snatch the hat and like put it on, and like take the feather and like put it in my my little like bead things and just like walk through the door. Okay, it after, is also after just like staring at him. We were like, in the darkness with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. you kind of like go like step step, and he just like stumble into cackler, and you just hear me doing like the echo of the effect. <laughs> <laughs> like flicking in the ear. Like what? How that work with you? I, I can say that. the same way. Just, the I, I same way it works. Just like, go, 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 go. Yeah. By the time that uh, it's ten minutes to do detect magic, mm-hmm. by the time that you have it up, the darkness up above seems to have faded. Oh. So, so they can see me again. So you, you can see again. Wow, that was that, that was really stupid, you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, but uh, you can see, and in the three hundred feet of dark vision that you've been granted, which lasts for how long? An hour. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can definitely see. This is. In grayscale now for you, unlit, um, a warehouse. It looks like it's got a, se- a rail balcony to a second floor with a couple doors up above. Um, and then it looks like it's got a main set of double doors, a single door um, opposite each other. So it looks like the double doors might be like a loading area. Um, and then it looks like there's several workbenches along one wall. It looks like there's a table with a few chairs. Um, there's a few other adjacent doors that are open on the floor that you are on. And then in the sort of center, there's another set of, like, open stairs, just like wooden railing stairs, but you can see through. Um, 
um, the sort of just like a, a framework of stairs that leads up to what looks like a second story um, glass, uh, wood and glass like office or something like that. Maybe like the, you know, if this was a, a active warehouse, maybe with a foreman or um, like gang leader or whatever, or a uh, work leader would be. Is there any like, was in, like work gang? Fabricy, clothy things in this area. Um, you can make a, a which do you have dark vision? Nope. Then unfortunately, you're not able to see this area is unlit. Hmm. Do it, uh, can I look for traps in the area? Or? Sure. Go ahead and make a um, perception check. Um, Matt, I- nice. Um, you don't immediately notice any traps or anything like that, but it seems like, at least in your immediate area, it does look like there's a tripwire, um, over the small door opposite the loading doors on the opposite side of the the warehouse floor plan. Um, it looks like it's active, but old. Um, the smell, so one second, um, the smell of, like, vomit and, uh, animal, and human waste and stuff like that, humanoid waste, is coming from the two chambers, um, the two opened door, doors that are sort of in the wall that you are on. Bro, did we just get teleported into a bathroom? <laughs> no, it's a big, yeah. large warehouse. Two floor, two floor situation. Interesting. Big like, bathroom. Like slaves. No, I don't mean the whole thing. I mean the room we specifically got to. I mean, we were in the basement. <laughs> in the basement. It sounds like maybe those two rooms maybe feed down to us. Or yeah. maybe lat- latrines. What are you going to do? After she's done with her detect magic, uh, noticing flow and and I'm not sure what to do. I'll just um, pop Mr. Mittens out, sort of by her leg, and have him start kind of, you know, doing the pet. You know, kind of like the cat nudge. Okay. You've got, like, a pygmy sheep cat nudging up against you. <laughs> just staring at It's very list, listless. <laughs> oh, it's me? Yeah. <laughs> in the other room. Did you come in there? Yeah, well, I probably Sorry. just popped up the stairs. Flo's, and... Flo's very out of it uh, today. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Probably be like, would be. She's she's gonna be like. She's only gonna say one word, and she's like fabric. And she's gonna like aimlessly wander, starting yeah. to pat things down, trying to look for uh, something. Clock-like. I'll I'm send one of the globules over her head. I'm watching Flo walk around. I'm stripping fabric. Yeah. <laughs> so you're looking for fabric. Yeah. Um, with your detect magic, I would just say uh, many of the objects that you picked up are registering as magic. Um, the coin, the patch, the sword, the weird flange club thing, um, all of the bottled liquids, um, except for one, which seems to be like a clearish liquid. Um, you're looking for a cloth, so go ahead and make a um, investigation check while you're going around the, the space. Is everyone else going up the space, or is anyone staying below? Um, I'll kind of just stand at the door. I guess not. I don't think blackness is going anywhere. Um, but from my pers- my position, can are there any windows? Is it j- or is it just completely walls? Um, from what you can tell, it looks like it's it's walls and doors. Okay. Five. You I'm don't. I'm gonna hang out with Tennille. Yeah, you don't particularly notice any um, cloth or anything like that, but your vision's a little limited, and uh, you're a little traumatized by some of the events of the day. And I, I'll message towards the, do, you, do you need fabric? I probably have fabric. I don't know, just something cloth. I need it now. Uh, how, how much and how big? Yeah. About a body size. Okay, I don't oh. quite <laughs> have that much in my backpack. Um, we could... Oh, gee, what would I say? We could... <laughs> we were using message so you wouldn't hear it. We I know. Could, oh, I know, but still. We could take him... He wants to be ready. Back somewhere, and then find a shroud for him. That's what you're going for, I assume. I don't want a stinking shroud. Um, <laughs> and she's we, gonna like keep <laughs> meandering to look for it. <laughs> Did we bring our um our ill-begotten silk with us? Oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh no. <laughs> Wait. Uh, I believe uh, previously when you guys visited the auction house of the mystery packages, oh, you did get yeah. some like half rotten silk. I swear we. Uh, no, we said we didn't want it. I don't. Yeah, we tried to sell it and no one wanted it. But I, yeah, I feel like this might be a good time. To... Yeah, like do you we, have? We, we have some half rotten silk. I like sit there. I'm like, That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll grab it and she's actually 
actually going to walk back towards Black Mist, and she's going to start wrapping him like they would all the pirates on their ship. Okay. Nice. Um, Slate, what are you up to amidst all this? You helped open the crate with the rats. Um, <laughs> crate. I guess two things. One, would it seem like, would it seem like the, the pirate would fit in the, the crate? Um, they're a little small for that. Okay. I mean, you could, because it would be a folded bunch of broken, rotten limbs. Um, but it would be in pieces rather than whole. And since, like, uh, she's kind of working on keeping him that's whole and maintained. Uh, an academic question. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just keep an eye out, make sure no one's, like, there's no movement around. Okay, make a perception check. Uh, I would say... Um, you still you've got lights going, right? Yeah, I'll just kind of it's a one minute thing, but I'll just kind of keep Re- casting, recasting, it, recasting yeah, it. Okay, so normal perception. What's, what's yeah, and I do have dark vision. Yeah, it's still at, you're still at uh, a penalty even in, if you're in pitch darkness with dark vision. Got it. Um, but with light, <laughs> you're good. So uh, total of twenty. Twenty. Uh, you don't notice any any movement or anything like that. Um, keep vigil. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, what's everyone else doing? Where we are and how to get out of here. Um, I, I think we're probably in one of Folian's warehouses. Um, has she picked up a uh, detect magic last for ten minutes? Are there any other magical signs? Like she'll probably head up into the warehouse and anything else pinging, or just the stuff, you know, the normal stuff and the stuff we picked up. Um, mostly the normal stuff and the stuff you picked up. You are noticing that um, there's faint traces of like the magic that was um, dispersed in this area, um, as well as what looks like some faint, strange traces in um, that you're kind of picking up, just like cursory as you're passing along um, the um, the two ajar and very smelly rooms. Um, there are faint traces of magic in the smelly rooms, and I think he pointed to a trap against one of them. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the trap was, uh, the tripwire was uh, around the entranceway. It's sort of like a jutted out space, and it's around the entranceway with the single door rather than the double doors. Okay. Um, there is faint traces of magic coming from the snowy room, but only, only faint. Do we want to try to do that? My instinct is we need to get you two to, a he- particularly you to a healer, and then we can figure out... Um, I just think we should try to get out of here without getting in another fight. With her saying that, I'm going to start walking the stairs to the Corman's office, or I assume to be Corman's office. Okay, yeah. I'll look for, uh, before I go, can I look for traps? On sure, stairs. investigation check. Um, bad, not great. I'm investigating. 15. Okay, um, you don't notice any particular traps or anything like that. Um... The door is open. It looks like it was, um, like, ransacked on the inside mm-hmm. of the place. Like, this is perhaps primarily where the individual was really, uh, bagging like, bagging things and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it looks like it's got, like, dark curtains that you can draw around the windows that lead out um, to look over the floor space. So you can, like, have privacy in the office. Um, or whatever, presumably for meetings or something. Um, you see a few mixed handfuls of papers scattered across a mahogany desk and across the floor, like, you know, kind of gathered in a, in a hurry. Um, it looks like um, uh, a smattering of coins um, and stuff like that. Um, just, like, has a visual read on the room. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, cool. So uh, when I look out the windows, like, the glass, can I see everyone down below? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to, like, look at them. Do, I, do any of you look up? Do I make eye contact with anyone? I mean, I'm looking around, so probably. Yeah, cool. it is, too, so. Cool. So if we make eye contact, I'll kind of, like, squint a little bit and pull a curtain shut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I will start grabbing some of the papers. I'll like, just kind of try to gather whatever papers. Okay. It looks like a couple of them are written in under common, so, um, from what you can see. But uh, most of them are, are empty or have, like, little handwritten notes or things like that but okay. one looks like a maybe a bill of sale okay. um, or a list of some kind of like uh, inventory okay. um, so that's what you notice there also I just noticed your shirt I like it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you rolled high on the perception check yeah there you go 
All right, so what's what's everyone else uh, doing in this area? Um, Slate's keeping a kind of a lookout, no movement or anything like that, no additional magic. Um, what's the what's the layout for you guys? Hey, uh, Grandpa, do you wanna you wanna stay with Blue while I uh, go take a listen at the doors? Yep, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, it's taking you a long time because you are quite exhausted. You are you're feeling. Um, it's using every ounce of what I've got. Yeah, <laughs> your your mouth is very dry. Um, your skin's a little cracked, and you're very, like, like your whole body just feels like it's covered in lead. Um, everything takes twice as much effort, um, so it's taken a while to, to secure that. Go ahead and make a medicine check for me. Uh, it's going to be with disadvantage because no, of your exhaustion. Oh, 12. Okay. Y you do a passively effective job in, like, keeping the sack of bones and rotted meat together as a, like, cohesive body, um, and do a reasonable job of, like, doing it up like you would have done. It takes about, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes to do. Um, I was gonna go listen at the double doors. Okay. And see if I hear any sounds. I'm, I'm assuming that would lead outside if they're loading doors. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. It's 14. Yeah, you're hearing sort of like a um, lot of bustle um, and noise. You're hearing the occasional like <clears throat> of like a pitching boat on the water. You're hearing some like seabirds and stuff like okay. that. You're hearing um, a lot of um, sort of like oh over here, I don't know, oh new shipment coming in, you know, like that kind of stuff. Or like hey back from the sea, you know, like you're hearing lots of things going by, people talking, um, sort of. <laughs> of carts and wagons and, and wheelbarrows being moved back and forward. Um, very bustle-heavy okay. um, activity. Activity. Um, it sounds like... Uh, um, like you hear a couple people like, Oh, where are we going to go? We're going to go to the Welcome Whale tonight! Like um, like you're hearing a couple people like talking about... It sounds like maybe you're getting the end of the day kind of uh, conversation. Okay. Um, of so, like Dockside. So, but hearing like the Welcome the Whale, like... Places that I recognize as in Solney. Yep. Okay, so we didn't get set somewhere else. Completely. As far as you can tell, no. Yeah. Okay. Unless there's a, a second Welcome in the Whale. Yeah, I mean... Or, or they're a chain. You know, yeah, never know. You know yeah, it's, it's a franchise. 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 Um, I'll kind of uh, go over to whoever's closest and, like, I think I think we're we're still in Solney. We're near the, the docks. <gasps> yeah, so it would be the, the Guildwater stalls, Ware Warrens kind of area. Okay. Do you want to just... When she's... Once Blue's done, just get out of here and walk like we belong. I mean, I could also disguise myself, but I know not all of us can. I can't. Um, did did Chirps point out the trap to us before he went upstairs, or did he not say anything? Okay. It's a drawn curtain room now. Okay. Sleet, Renostis, what are you guys up to? Uh, so I'm down with with Flo, um, what, what does Flo look like right now? <laughs> Half dead. <laughs> uh, Grandpa will go and, like, would you like to have a seat? And, like, just plop himself and sit crisscross applesauce on the ground. Because he's also tired. Because he's old. <laughs> I'm gonna, are you, like, next to me? Or where are you? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna, like, plop my head, like, on your shoulder and just, like, heave crying, but it's, like, dry tears because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm dehydrated. <laughs> oh. And then we'll, we'll do the sweet grandpa hug and just pat pat. Um, I don't know if I can do this. Just, like, all the emotions coming out, um, I'm gonna do create or destroy water and make it rain inside the room. <laughs> okay, With it is now yeah. a very uh, <laughs> damp room. Um, the uh, crate of rats is not benefiting from the rain, um, as far as the smell goes. But um, yeah, you just M M Mr. Mittens is still with you, so you start smelling that like oh. wet wool smell, <laughs> and he's still trying. Kind of very unhappy face, pieces. looking <laughs> cheap. Grandpa knows better. He's he just says the word sheep. <laughs> just gonna let it happen. <laughs> Pretend like it's not even happening. Uh, your plant is enjoying the water. 
Yeah, thank you. Do you like <laughs> baby Groot dancing like little? No, I'll take it. All right, I'll come back down the stairs from my office. Okay, from your office, yeah. nice. Uh, you come back down. Um, and I'll go over to attempt to disarm the trap. Okay, go ahead and make a dex check with thieves tools. No, dexterity. <laughs> we roll proficiency and dex to all together. Yep. Doing the thing. Add those numbers, man. Uh, Slate, 18. what do you? Okay, eighteen. You yeah. successfully disarmed it. Um, Slate, what do you? Uh, Just keep an eye on. Keep an eye on. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a. Um, I mean, like I said, you're noticing the. Same things that I laid out. A few workbenches to the one side with some stuff on them. Um, the cracked open doors of the f- floor that you're on with the like really smelly contents, and then um, up top uh, the doors above. All right, I'll take a look at the stinky room. I just want to make sure you're not no, missing. No, 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 that's fine. I'll look at the stinky room. Okay, you go ahead and look in. Um, <laughs> looks like it is a like couple cot situation. Um, like on the floor and um, like stained in like unusual colors like some pinkish um, and stuff like that as well as like darker blood um, that kind of stuff Uh, you are seeing the like shriveled remains of an individual Um, like their skin is just like stretched really thin over their bones Um, eyes are just sort of like glassy staring dead Um, and their jaws open, and you see rotten pink and black teeth. So like the drunkard we found? Like the drunkard you found. Um, you notice, like, parts of their chin have been, like, melted away. There's no tongue. Um, and, like, parts of the floor are, like, pitted. Um, so. Neat. I will close the door to the sticky room. Yeah. With me outside, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know? No. So. That's what you find. Cool. Can we speed Italy down? Let's do back to Gavin's. Uh, yeah. I don't know how much longer we'll be welcome, given some of the things Lou said, but uh, if we can get one more free night of lodging. Mm, maybe a few. I think we can play the sympathy angle. Yeah, maybe don't bring your captain inside the house. <laughs> I couldn't say that. I'll write it down. <laughs> so what do you do with that? Is it like burial at sea? Or... Because we can't really walk around the city with a... We're right by there. A rotten corpse. We're right by there. Yeah, just, just chuck, chuck a sucker in the water and <laughs> off you go. Walk out of the warehouse. <laughs> you know, I'll do it for you. you know, big ol' arms. Oh. I feel like that might draw some uh, attention we can't really afford to have right now. We'll head down to the water side where there's all those riffraff. Yeah, all the time down there. Trust um, me. We are not welcome in the salt pools. It's just a quick little in and out. That's fine. They Otherwise, what are we going to do with that? I don't know. Tony had an adventure. Mm-hmm. Morty is fine. Hello. You have. She just had a blank stare and she's going to start marching out towards the exit. Are you leaving the body? I'll be like, bring the body. Those are the only words that I'm saying. And I'm going to march out. <laughs> I ain't touching that thing. I'm just going to say no. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we need a plan before. Before we do this, she's marching towards the exit. So yes, you're, you're, you're leaving the body then. Yeah, so Neil will just, just like sigh really deeply and rub his face and go in and like, no, don't give in. like try to like. No, we all look like a I know I can't do it to one bit, so I'm like. I mean, I'm not that strong, but you know. More than you do. What are you doing? Drag it up the stairs. And it's mushy. It's like her manger, like coming it's out. It's like the whole up. way. Yeah, it's, there's this stuff. So, so, <laughs> I didn't so, even roll! So, no, it's not permanent. She wrapped it. Or it is permanent. Yeah. So, 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 okay. What is the plan? Bring the body. Where? <laughs> I want to reach it's, for the door. <laughs> what? What? I'm just you? going to leave it, you know. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah, we. We'll leave it if you don't tell us a good way of getting rid of it. I'll also abandon it and I'll go grab her and kind of turn her and like, <laughs> like you're short. Are you short or are you tall? I'm like average height. So I kind of like look at her and be like, what are we doing, Flo? What are we doing? 
And then I'm going to come up and push you out of the way and like slap you across the face and hold you by the shoulders and then do the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing for us? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to start crying again. I'm like a slump. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want her slumping on me. Oh. If she starts slumping on me, I'll just like step out of the way. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move forward. back and back in and grab her. Should, should I just carry her out and leave? Or... Yeah, I, we can Cause... take care of the body. We just need to know a way to do it that won't get us all murdered. We can't really take care of the body. Nope. There's not much we can do with that. I guess because our fireball thing. Yeah, I mean, he could just stop. Don't you dare to touch his body. You, you I didn't say that. I can't say that. I know. I, I wouldn't touch it. I'd probably we, hold it. We could, like, what is your plan here? Because we cannot tromp into Galen's house carrying the dead body of a man who apparently attacked my mother across Skefnir many years ago. We, I have questions about that. He apparently used to blind people so they couldn't see the light. He's hurt a lot of people in the story. I'm going outside. Anyone wants to come with me? Sure, I'm, I'll go outside. Oh, well, we can go outside. I'll hold him aside. I'll go outside. <laughs> okay. But not with him. Whoever you knew, whatever aspects of Black Mist that made him him, is no longer there. All we're doing by doing this is putting ourselves in danger. Either I do it proper or I'm going down. What, what I'm going to reach for the door again. Slow, what oh, is doing it? Down, Slow, what is doing it proper? You have not explained to us any semblance of I a I need plan. water. <laughs> Deep <laughs> water. Okay, so the plan is to get on a... So we throw him in the water. We water. throw him in the ocean. That's kind of the best I thing. don't think that we can do that reasonably. <laughs> uh, have we not on the, the city again? docks? <laughs> they will obviously be looking for people throwing human sized objects into the water. I All these days, like, just take executive action here. I feel like it's time. We need to get. Yeah. Them. Let's let's move on from the freaking warehouse. Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm gonna I'm gonna open the door. I'm gonna pick Flo up and like just fire Miss Character out. <laughs> okay. Are you resisting? We're Good. gonna try. Good. Okay. <laughs> strength strength contest. Go for it. At disadvantage. At disadvantage. Like triple disadvantage. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tell me you're wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, four. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of like a limp noodle flopping at you a little bit and bawling while you're just like one one arm. What'd you get? 23. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, whoop. No problem. Um, and then you're, you're heading out the front. I mean, I'll like crack it and peek. But otherwise, continue on. It's bright lights. You're like, because um, permanent sun. Um, but uh, you definitely notice a like busy, bustling street. It looks like the Warren region of Guildwater stalls. So Flo's not in the room anymore? He took her outside? Uh, he was kind of cracking the door first to take a look. Um, it looks like you're at a sort of alleyway space um, with four adjacent warehouses. This one seems to be, like, the smallest in the shadow of these four. As soon as I think that Flo can't see me, I'd like to... I know that she wrapped up the body. Yep. I'd like to quickly and messily unwrap it and look for... Um, does he have any jewelry? Anything that would be, like, symbolic of him that maybe uh, Renosis feels like he could provide Flo with some sort of closure and... I really thought we were about to sell that off. Make, uh, <laughs> wow. make an investigation or medicine check, whichever's better for you. Okay. I didn't take off the jacket or anything, so while I'm not looking, this is like anybody's chance that they want to grab anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's an 18. 18, yeah. So there's the hat and the coat. I took the hat. You took the hat. Okay, so the coat is still remaining. Um, black, dark blue, and purple with like me- uh, iron skull and crossbones buttons. Um, and you also notice, what'd you get? 18? 18. Uh, he has three solid gold teeth. Oh, bad. <laughs> yeah, he had not to flow. Um, he also he also seems to have a um, what looks like um, some sort of like he's got an earring. Um, it looks like it's a stud of some kind, um, and it looks like it's in the shape of a wave. That's, That's cool. uh, that will be the trinket that Renosis will um, try to remove. Nice. Yeah, you're able to remove it. No problem. 
It kind of comes, comes off with a bit of ear that you're sort of like. Okay. Everyone else ex- exiting? Yes. Um, it's still still attempting to resist. Slate. I'm just gonna say like all slump like slate put me down. Uh, are you are you gonna follow us or are you gonna go back? You're drawing some attention because you know eight foot eleven go- Goliath, um, carrying like firemen's carry. You're, you're getting some some looks, uh, um, but people kind of lose. You don't see any like guards immediately. I'll readjust into a princess carry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Annette can see, it's like, oh, that's what you get for day drinking. Tiger <laughs> like carrying Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say anything? Can we do anything? I asked him to put me down. But I, I asked, are you say. going to follow us, or are you going to start resisting? I didn't again? make a comment. Then I'm not putting you down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, everyone else making their exit as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the sun's kind of stabbing back at your eyes. You guys are all pretty worn down now um, in this situation. But yeah, you're back in the Guildwater stalls. Um, you're actually at the warehouse that you seemed that you had um, kind of had described to you before. Um, since kind of putting some pieces together it's the small warehouse in the shadow of four others um in this space and you do notice a small like little uh piranha like fish like at the base of the door nice. um and with that we're gonna go ahead and jump to a quick break for uh bathroom snacks and water and all that so don't go away guys we'll be back in maybe five minutes and uh go from there. <laughs>
All right, getting back to it. Um, welcome back. Party just <laughs> exited after investigating the warehouse um, that they were recently in, um, after, which it seems like they were teleported to or that they exited into via the portal um, that they had left from previous session. Um, seems that they found some unusual equipment. They at least wrapped up the corpse of Captain Blackmist, um, investigated a few areas, finding some papers um, in the warehouse, sort of the uh, foreman's office kind of region, as well as um, what looks like the evidence of some kind of uh, dead body um, victimized by or uh, affected by um, in similar symptoms to an individual they had encountered before Unclear exactly what happened to them, but it uh, seems like they had some kind of uh, rot in their mouth or um, and some sort of like acidic uh, vomit signs, things like that. So um, now having left back into the city streets of Solny, um, you find yourself in the bustling sort of end of turning uh, the, the, the work period is kind of running to a close and individuals are kind of heading to taverns or heading to their homes. Um, quite a lot of busy, active uh, motion and stuff like that uh, on the streets. A lot of, like It's a crowded region in general. Um, you're drawing some looks from your haggard and bloodied selves, um, as well as a almost nine foot tall Goliath carrying uh, princess style, a pirate-esque, lavishly dressed, uh, you know, feathered cap. Uh, water Genasi, um, so drawing some attention, uh, but it's a busy place. You guys are being like jostled back and forth with the thick, you know, wash of people coming back and forward. Um, you know, the smell of tar and less savory things, you know, salt and tar and less savory things coming from sort of this region. Um, not the worst part of town, but not the uh, nicest either. As they're walking, Nutka's going to kind of hold her head and kind of lean into the fact that she's already squinting, and as people are staring, just... Oh, I'm never drinking again. Oh, jeez. For the love of soul. And just stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you make a general deception check to see how well you're selling it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you are squinting a lot, and you are pretty, like, weary looking, um, so you're selling it reasonably, certainly enough for passerby, uh, you know, passing observation. I'm gonna put my, my sun cloth hat back on, and... Shade cloth, yeah. Shade cloth, yeah. That thing. Yeah, it's, it's helping a little bit, at least in the immediate vicinity, you're not, like, painfully eye-searing stabs, um, but, uh, still, your vision is a little bit, uh, challenged. Um, I'll kind of rummage through my bag while I'm being <laughs> held by sleep. <laughs> Try to get to it. And whip out my hat and like throw it towards Tennille. <laughs> the one you took from? No, my personal hat. Your personal hat? Oh. Hat. Yep. Is it shade cloth? No, it's a hat. Didn't I have like a pirate's? Yeah, you had like a pirate's standard yeah. hat. It wasn't made of shade cloth though. It was standard sort of leather. And, um, but it has like... It has like a brim, sure. But uh, his hat is... is uh, also brimmed, but also is made of uh, oh. shade cloth material, which is like designed for uh, okay. shading area, um, either curtains or parasols, or in this case, hats. Um, is there anyone that's like doing me a particular, like, is particularly looking at me? It's like, or any eyes that I'm particularly drawing? Like? Make a perception check. If you don't want it, I'll put it back in my bag. <laughs> I'll put it on top of my other hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. How'd you do? Switch over to you. <laughs> I look fabulous. And I'll be like, Nine. don't lose it. <laughs> and like, Not that you can tell. <laughs> um, you're drawing some looks in general, but mostly you're just like, you're being jostled every now and then. Um, and people are like, giving like a, giving watch it, feathers. You know, you're getting like people jostling back and forward. Okay, as they wait, 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 wait. Stop at the watch it, feathers. Okay. <laughs> okay, so whoever did that, I'm about to put my hand on his shoulder. Okay. Dead in the eyes. Six foot six orc. Like half orc. <laughs> Try and stop me. Okay, and you're just like reaching up. I'm like, look at him. I'm like, I'm dead in the eyes. I'm gonna go. 
Brother. <laughs> My brother's dead. I'm gonna shove your arm away. And just like walks, walks off. You know, like spits on the ground and walks away. As you would. Um, and you see like a sort of like fish hook, like tattoo around his neck um, that he sort of is like rubbing and he walks away. Nah, nah, I hit an emotional spot. <laughs> Alright, so what's everyone doing? Keep in a tight um, hold on my money. Okay, make a survival check. Shame. Shame. Yeah, let's just get a survival check all the way around. What was asleep? <laughs> what if I instead of pouch around my, you know, nine foot tall almost Goliath neck? Make a survival check. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm jumping right for back. it. I spilled Chaboy on my new oh. um, hoodie. <laughs> so one second. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I'm sorry. Wow. Spilled Robert something. Chaboy. Her you guys haven't had chamoy? No. I don't even know what that is. Oh. No, do I. It's like a, a fermented nope. um, <laughs> Mexican candy sauce. It's a local it's Somnia delicacy, more. clearly. <laughs> um, Are you drinking it, or is it on something? All right. It was on pineapple. Let's get, oh, okay. uh, let's get the um, the results here. So, uh, Flo, how'd you do? You're asleep. Oh, asleep. Okay, so. <laughs> I'll guard her. Okay. 17. Okay. 21. Okay. 20. Okay. 14. Okay. And Renostis, survival check when you get a second. I feel like I Sorry? Oh, yeah, I got it. 19. 19. 19. Um, okay. Nicholas, I personally feel as though I should get advantage for living in the slums for so many years. <laughs> You're pretty worn down. Um, you know, not, uh, you don't get an advantage, uh, I would say. Um, it looks like, um, how much gold do you have? Okay. Um, had yeah, had twenty-two. Uh, six gold were, was taken. Wow. Um, but uh, it seems like possibly from the like half work. Um, <laughs> seems like the most likely. I respect, <laughs> it. I respect it honestly. Uh, when he first bumped into you, probably. Um, so in any case, you guys are heading where? North to the Jewels Ward, back to Uncle Galen's manor? Yeah. Kel- Kelmar Manor? There's an uncomfortable conversation ha- going to happen when we get there, so might as well get it over with. Okay, so you make your way um, over there. It's a slow go. I mean, uh, you're carrying flow, so that at least helps, but it's just a slow go in general. You guys are pretty worn down. There's a lot of traffic. Um, space is very occupied um, and stuff like that. You're starting to see some decorations being put up um, in celebration for the upcoming uh, mid-year's turning. Um... As you guys are getting into the Jewels Ward, where the air is nice and fresh and, and things like that, the houses, you can see some um, like tapestries and stuff like that, which is pretty common, uh, especially for Alavax, the twin, twin dragon. Um, tapestries are pretty common uh, uh, there, as well as um, a few other kind of uh, markers, a lot of different um, two-sided clothing or two-sided um, like unfurling of banners and things like that um, that can be representative of the turn from one half of the year to the other. Um, so you're starting to see some of that being put together. Um, like I said, huge influx of people in the less wealthy areas as you're moving along. Um, it's pretty packed and a lot of like refugee type looking people seem to be um, moving into or occupying different uh, repurposed warehouses in the Warrens region. Um, you pass a few shops and stuff like that as you navigate the edges of um, the trade show ward and kind of, you know, seeing the the vast glimmering um, high soul seats and Cronosa and, you know, the, the main central um, Whitewater Square area that you're passing, pa- you know, walking past, not going over the bridges to get to that area, but kind of going up and around. Um, you eventually make your way back to the lavish, um, but for Jules Ward manners, Reasonably modest Kelnara Manor, um, done in its sort of three-story style. Um, some marble and general, like it got a few columns and stuff like that. Sort of that sort of Grisha, Grisha and Roman kind of esque uh, architecture to it. But uh, make your way back to it. Um, you guys knocking on the door, or are you just going right? I will knock on the oh, door. I don't think before we got there. Okay, go ahead. On our way, like through the streets, and we're seeing all the drift. Do we see any? Like wealthier looking folks to look out of place, or like any, anybody that looks like anybody that looks out of place. Okay, perception check. Us. <laughs> 14. 
Um, it looks like you see another group of adventurers um, who look like they're heading towards the um, rainbow complex in the Whitewater Square. Do they have nicer stuff than we do? Um, they look fresher than you guys do, um, but they uh, a group of uh, four individuals um, moving along, and they're sort of like, come on, come on, we got to get our lore bite while we can before uh, mid-year's turning and all that stuff. We want to be out of here. Um, do any of them seem more in a rush than the others? They're all kind of in a hurry. Um, they're like in the distance. You're not like oh, right next no. to them. No, um, you see some individuals who are, are wealthier than others or wealthier looking, but at least in this region, uh, most of the refugees and stuff like that are the people who can't afford nicer areas and that, you know, then repurposed warehouses. Can I bump into a wealthy person and try to take on them? As we get to the um, Jules Ward, sure. You know, you're passing by a few people who are looking a little, uh, you know, nicer going about their business or maybe going to the edges of the trade's toe, like nicer region of shops. Um, you see one well-dressed uh, woman in sort of like a rainbow-esque style toga. Um, go ahead and make a uh, sleight of hand check. Cool. So I'm going to depict this so far I roll. Just because the consequences could vary here. I'm going to, like, as I'm stepping up, like, kind of fake trip into her kind of thing. Okay. And then we'll see what happens. Okay. Whew, let's go. <laughs> um, slight of hand. Where's slight of hand? That's in Dex, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 23. Okay. Um... You uh, stumble into this woman. She's got a uh, sort of human, but uh, maybe with some like elvish cast uh, to her, maybe half elven. Um, she's got long like hair in this like cascade of miniature braids, and then a very like elaborate, like almost flower hairdo uh, going on. Um, she's got one guard like with her. Um, as, um, or like bodyguard looking individual. Doesn't look like a soul's guard, but a hired, um, hired hand, which are pretty common in the Jewel's Ward. Um, you stumble into her, and she's like, oh, Unhand me, creature! Mommy? I'm, gonna, I'm trying to, like, I, the, the role is trying to pick her. Sure, I'll get to that in a second, but, yeah. uh, the, and you, you, like, like, grab, like, a coin purse yeah, situation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the... The guy, the guard, is a big sort of burly looking bald human. Um, it's like, all right, back away, back away, and and uh, you know, sort of like, watch your step, watch your step, like, and, like, like, like half the... draws his um, like axe from his belt. I'm just gonna crawl up on the ground crying. <laughs> and she's like, well, what's on a well, Thrag? Let's just not worry about such uh, dross. Come on, we're late for our appointment at the Mass Palace anyway. Let's go. And she's kind of like. Hurrying along and her readjusting her like toga and just like her do and all that kind of stuff and just like <laughs> stiffly walking away. Okay, and then my crying with it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. All right. How much right. should I get? How much should I get? Um, okay. So uh, inside you um, find a um, so it's like a coin purse. Mm -hmm. um, you find. Um, so it's probably a good um, uh, three platinum, nine gold. Wow, dude. Up. She is walking around the wall. Um, you also find um, one copper, um, strangely, which is, like, which is crazy for, like, Jules Wardians do not deal in copper. Interesting. So that, like, you like would copper? know. Um, yeah, go ahead and make, um, go ahead and make a uh, investigation check or perception, whichever is better for you. Uh, that's going to be 20 total. Okay. Um, like most coins, it's like stamped with the like soul's sun and stuff like that. Um, and usually they're da they're stamped with like a uh, serial number. Oh, whoops. Um, you're uh, usually stamped with like a serial number or other kind of... I need to switch to music. Um, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, like with the date and the casting and stuff like that. Um, this one seems to have like an irregular um, pattern of um, numbers. Um, so it's 271, oh. okay. 89, okay. 363. Three. Okay. 
for social security number. <laughs> Sick. It's your, <laughs> your credit card number. Um, so card anyway, card. you pocket. You, you're examining the coin um, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys head on over. You knocked at the uh, thing, the door. Uh, yet again, a um, little bit of a delay, and uh, cousin Lufeus uh, enters. <laughs> Uh, a- answers the door, excuse me, and he says, Oh, uh, I'm glad you're back. Was there success? Where's the rude fellow? Uh, he's not going to be returning. Uh, well, uh, sorry, sort of. The um, apologies to Flo. Why, why don't you all... Uh, well, I want to... She's just, yeah. well, I guess I'll make it in the morning. Um, <laughs> but why don't you all uh, come on in, and um, we'll get you all uh, settled. I was worried if you were going to be coming back um, uh, by the end of the turning. It was, uh, it was a close thing. Well, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, when um, when Father gets back, I'm sure he'll be interested he's to hear about it. He's not home yet? No, he, he has not. Uh, he's a little bit on the late side. I'm not sure where he's been. I'm sure he's quite busy. Um, in any case, why don't you come on in and uh, we'll get you all settled. It looks like you've been through a right mess. Um, you uh, smell like a right mess, so perhaps visit the, uh, the baths and all that. Um, and, uh, you know, let's get off the streets here. You're drawing uh, unwanted attention, I'm sure. Well, my eyes, yes, sir. Yes, let's go inside. So you guys get inside. Um... And he kind of like directs you to the, the bathhouse region. Uh, Lou. Yes. Um, so, Lou, Lou, Lou. Lou, Lou Just Lou Theus would be great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, my, my mother, uh, Rhea, yes. has she come around in any way? Uh, I believe um, nothing too much has changed. Uh, they've been rather busy with some of the preparations, um, setting things up for a uh, rather classic. Um, Midio's turning celebration um, and uh, trying to make a few preparations uh, in attempt for the uh, um, parade and all that um, in the coming turnings. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, since uh, my father has not been back uh, to further persuade, um, I believe that uh, she has remained relatively firm in her normal position, um, but perhaps uh, once Things will come around soon enough. Uh, are they home? Uh, I believe they are uh, coming home soon. I think they were gathering a few more other materials. Um, I think I thought it may be a way to attempt to persuade them. I think I'll skip the bath for now. Okay, whatever you but, but think is better. Maybe later, perhaps, later. Yeah, perhaps stay yeah, a little bit farther now. Um, that would be great. Uh, anyway, I've got to go take care of uh, Mr. Slimy, so... Um, oh, could, could I come with you and, and stand a bit far away? Uh, yes, well, uh, yes, I've, I've got uh, some, some extra tough glass uh, for his tank now. And he seems to be doing quite well, and he kind of shows you, like... Ooh. You know, he's got a little terrarium for this giant, multicolored <laughs> shimmer snail. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, feeding a few uh, pieces of, like, thick greenery. Well, while, while he's watching Luthaeus and Nika, and Daniel's kind of like doing this thing where he's like looking between the two of them repeatedly, mm-hmm. and just like do, just like the, the wheels are turning, the wheels are turning, and then he, he goes up to the bath. So, 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 so what, so what sort of thing are you, are you feeding him? Uh, well, mostly some uh, some spinach from the under farms, um, a few heads of uh, cabbage. Um, he's going through quite a lot of cabbage these days, but um, the market is uh, spiking, of course, with the influx of. Refugees. In any case, um, it seems to be uh, going rather well. Um, having to clean the tank quite often, which is a dangerous experience. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, you know, working on it and uh, some some putting together some initial research notes on um, the efficacy uh, regions for um, different applications of the slime. Ooh, um, I very much like. I was thinking. Well, it's kind of already. I was going. Do you happen to have, like, a cauldron that you do not at all use for anything you eat, or that I could use? So I, I was thinking of experiment. you know, I dye a lot of things, and I know they were using this for dye, but maybe mixing it with sort of other animal substances I collected along the way. Right. Uh, who, who was they who was using this for the dye? Um, uh, the, the, the people that sold him to us. Quick deception check. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he didn't know about that's a sixteen. Oh, oh, oh well, yes. Um, in, a, in any case, 
Uh, my notes are quite preliminary. Uh, I don't really have any alchemists' tools or sets. That's not really my, my area. I prefer just uh, academic research um, and uh, general assistance to my father. Um, and uh, been working on putting together a few uh, reports. I know I'm not of... Uh, Prismere or anything, but uh, some some magical uh, some notes about different uh, creatures and uh, a few other things. But like I said, it's all early stages. We're we're, we're getting there. I'd love to help you with with that. Oh uh, yes, I, yes. I I, well, I I, I I I do try and. Um, I would like this to be a solo publication, to be honest. Um, and uh, I, I, I very much, I'm trying to establish my uh, my credentials, as it were. And I think uh, the academic community at large will for, uh, prefer and more evaluate uh, our own individual things. But if you'd like to compare notes, I'm sure we'd be able to make something I mean, happen. I'm sure, uh, and she'll sort of pull out the thing she got from the Prismere when she registered. It's like, uh, I'm sure... You know, you want to establish yourself away from, you know, anyone that might overshadow you. Well, no one will respect me if uh, I am mooching off of the coattails of a more uh, ranked individual. Um, I, I'm, I'm merely trying to establish my uh, my credentials, as it were. Okay, that, that, that seems fair. Yes, yes, that yes, yes, yes. Go, go, go okay. do something or bathe or whatever. <laughs> I'm busy, I'm taking notes. Okay, He's, I'm like, gonna, grabbing. I'm gonna go knit, and as she leaves the room... By the way, you know he uh, calls you Lulu because he likes you, right? Yeah, he he never calls people that he doesn't respect by that that he respects greatly by by their full names, and then she'll leave. Who's he? Tanil. So you guys take a little bit to, to bathe and clean up and stuff. <laughs> yeah, good. I think she's trying to spread the blood a little more. <laughs> okay. Um, interesting strategy. Um, <laughs> I have a plan. Got it. Did Flo ever wake up or is she still sleeping? She's knocked out. <laughs> uh, she, Annette Cole kind of keep an eye on Flo too. It's like, she's breathing. She's breathing. Okay, she's so breathing. just take her up to the bedroom and just put her in bed. <laughs> yeah. And then shower. Faith. Faith. Yeah. Um, so you guys take a little while to to recoup and stuff like that. I'd say this is you know short rest kind of timeline here at least um, over the next hour. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to do? Uh, or are you gonna just stay here and wait out until you see um, Uncle Galen and Bria and Nadia return? Did you want to go out and do stuff like that? You gather that um, and you check some of your like the time pieces and stuff that are in the house. Um, it looks like it's the end of the turning that you guys started, like, your uh, infiltration and, and heist situation on. Um, so we can at least, you can go ahead and use some uh, hit dice, if you'd like, um, to, to restore some some hit points, to get some, uh, some oomph back in you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a couple hour process, but you're not obviously long resting just yet, so what's... Uh, We're level three or four right now. We're four. Four, four. four? Oh, yeah. Um, it's not going to heal up at all. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the dice. Great. Flo, are you just going long rest or are you going to wake up later? Resting. Okay. You're yeah. just like out. Okay. I'm out. Yeah. And, and, and again, Annette can kind of pop. Or actually, she'll um, have Mr. Mittens go with her and she'll occasionally <laughs> pop in. It's like she's breathing, pop out. <laughs> um, after after bathing and cleaning. I'm going to I heard something no, sheep. she's counting, counting sheep. sheep. Oh. <laughs> one. 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 Was that one or two? <laughs> well, if it's two, I think we need to. <laughs> you really are. You don't know. <laughs> okay, some double vision. All right, so you guys have definitely enjoy the cleanup, the bath, all that kind of stuff. It's very nice facilities here. You've got quite a lot of like perfumed oils and soaps that you can avail yourself to. Um... I'm gonna like way over you with that. Like bath bath or meaning like no, se separate one. separate chambers. There's uh, three separate chambers. We're they're each they're each big enough. They're each big enough to hold about four people. Um, the baths. So you take up like a good portion of one of them. Just say, uh, um, cannibal time. You can take your, take you guys' turns, um, or you can share as as you're comfortable with. Um, but over the course of the period, you guys get your short rest benefits. What else would you guys like to do? Um, by the time you guys emerge and stuff like that, um, uh, Bria, Nadia, and Galen, Uncle Galen, uh, haven't returned as far as you're aware. Um, I was going to clean up, 
put on clean clothes and go down to the library and read while I waited. Okay, anything in particular? Um, I was going to do some more religious research, um, kind of maybe peruse the books I had brought back in a little bit more detail, since we were on the road when I was reading them before. Yeah, um, go ahead and... <clears throat> Any particular subject matter um, or thing that you're looking for, or just kind of reading for pleasure? I'm actually interested in my tattoos. Why okay. They, why they glow? Why wouldn't they? Um, I followed Tennille down to the library. I think last time we were together, because Tennille returned her book. I also returned. I at least thought about returning the book, but I would like to make sure that I return the book inside the checkout sheet. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Yeah. <laughs> that terrible? And while she's looking around the library, I'm just going to find a comfy chair, sit down, and I imagine that in the, I've got so many supplies, I think like maybe in the carpenter's tools that I might have like a polishing cloth and I'll take out the uh, wave earring and start polishing it and make sure that it looks very clean, beautiful, pristine, getting any... <laughs> ear bits off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it looks much better um, after you're finished. What was your rule? Two. Um, unfortunately, there's no conclusive um, stuff in the texts that you find there. Okay. Um, they're pretty old and hard to decipher at, at some points, so it's not, you know, a cinch to read. Okay. Um, and you're still pretty tired. Yeah. Um, so there is, there is that. Um, but uh, it seems like there's... You know, further research that's warranted, further texts that you may be able to um, peruse or set aside, or at least look for that maybe aren't here or in the restricted section of his vast, beautiful library okay. that I'm jealous of. <laughs> um, so, uh, as you're doing that, what's uh, what's everyone else doing? Um, can I look through those papers I've gathered? Yeah, go ahead. Um, most of them, like I said, are just occasional little... Um, some of them look like schematics uh, or layouts for like building expansion, uh, adding rooms and stuff like that. It looks like the initial warehouse didn't have those two like Stink room. stink stinking rooms. Um, they were added. Uh, the basement was also an addition. Um, and then let me look up. Um, you also notice um, what looks like uh, receipts of sale, purchase of materials. Um, you've got. Um, the um, rats, um, we've got <laughs> the uh, forceps and glass vials, um, you've got what look like wooden carrying cases, um, several crates, um, and then what looks like um, uh, six snakes. Knew it. <laughs> um, that were purchased as well. Um, and you also notice a separate one that just looks like a um, previous exchange contract of a uh, wand of restoration uh, sold to um, Patron of the uh, of the Patchpoles gang. Right. Um, the one, the ones that are uh, pretty blank, or mm -hmm. have like this little scroll on. Uh, I'm gonna start practicing origami. Okay, uh, go ahead and. Um, Make a, uh, I guess, light a hand check. Not very good yet. Okay, yeah. It's still it's a hard, hard thing to perfect in, the, in an afternoon. I'm, so, like, I'm picturing, some I get, papers. Like, I'm picturing I get, like, some weird... It's abstract. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to try to make it, like, come to life. My whole goal is I was going to try to make, like, a little, like, a little swan thing, or a little crane and get to, like, fly around. So whatever this crumple of whatever it is, I'm going to try to make it come to life. Uh, okay, via what? Magic. Yes, I gathered that, but is there a particular ability you're applying? No. Sure isn't. Early. Okay, um, I believe you have some, if you look up the, the stuff for I'm sure um, there's something in Artificer, the you do have some stuff that way. Do you have homunculus? Um, it's a little um, lopsided. Excellent. Um, and kind of flutters unevenly um, and sort of seems to... Uh, Circle its way down to the ground before nice. kind of pathing into the ground there. Um, and uh, that's kind of all that you're getting so far. Um, but uh, keep working, keep working. Thank you. Um, you hear... Um, so that's what he's up to. 
Um, you were talking with Luthaeus and getting some mm-hmm. sort of m- <laughs> dirtied up. <laughs> uh, and uh, once she's uh, done with um, talking to Lulu, she'd like to just, uh, go sort of kind of prop herself up in um, uh, Bria and Nami's room and just sort of knit and wait wait for them in there. Okay. You're definitely noticing um, some like decorations that have been put up. Huh. Um, kind of more... Uh, classic rustic style in celebration of the mid years turning, um, which sort of in, which involves a sort of like ribbon pole effect um, of this like two sided ribbon, um, and um, it seems like they've actually like set up some of it um, in their room. There, um, it's small, like it's a miniature one, um, but the right I- like idea and stuff like that, and kind of reminds you of some some nice memories and things like that. Yeah. Smell the nostalgia for a little bit, and she'll still keep checking in on Flo via the sheep. Um, yeah, Flo is still it's asleep. Baby monitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the rest of you, what are you up to? Flo meter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Tamil and I are still in the library. Yeah. Uh, after Bernosus feels satisfied with the job that he's done, he'll uh, look over at Tamil, who's presumably still looking through all the sources. Like, is there anything that I could help you look for? I'll, uh, I'm gonna sigh and hold out my hands. I don't have my gloves on. Um, after the bath, I took them off because we're inside. And I'll start um, casting guidance and let it go. But when I start it, you see that the little lines on my hands start glowing. And then it, it fades when I'm stop- I stop the spell. And uh, I... I want to know why it's doing that. With no regard for personal space, Augustus <laughs> <laughs> will like grab one of your hands and like hold it up right in front of his face and like watch as like the color fades. And um, has is there anything that I wonder if Augustus has seen anything or heard anything like this before? Uh, make a. Religion check. Fourteen? Okay. It's not really your purview or area um, as much. Um, you've heard of... Um, you might know at least more about the cloud carvers, um, those powerful uh, sort of druidic or nature-attuned individuals who practice cooperative weathermancy to ensure that these areas that are in consistent sunlight or consistent dryness uh, get regular um, rain and things like that. Um, and thinking about it, actually, it seems like Solny is a little late on its rain recently. Um, but um, you have you know that um, sometimes you've seen, you know, nature-connected individuals um, show visual signs of their connection. Um, and things like that, so possibly something like that here, but again, it's not really your area um, that you would know specifically why this is happening in this case. Oh, gosh. Flayna, you were a librarian once. I don't want to risk that. <laughs> Go for it, it's fine. <sighs> I wonder what sort of query terms you've been using <laughs> during your search. Uh, well, I'll kind of gesture... <laughs> Uh, it's a... Which section are you looking in, girl? <laughs> it's controlled vocabulary. Okay. Um, so, to be able to kind of, like, gesture to the two books that he's got out, which is on the... I'm gonna... I always butcher the... How to pronounce it? Uh, the Elusha? Yeah, Elusha. Elusha. The Elusha and kind of... It, it's related to this. And that's... That's do, as much as I know. Do I agree with that assessment? Is that... Does that spark anything for me? Like, do I recognize the Elusha as far as my... Okay. Not particularly. Um, I mean, you've, you've at least heard of the term, um, but it's not something that is very prolific in this part of the world. Okay. Who, I unfortunately can't help too much in this, but I am curious what led you to this conclusion. And yeah. no gesture at the books. He kind of gets a little, a little dodgy. Uh, kind of like looks away and is like, oh, well, I see them. They, they, they show me things. They, they come to me and show me what to do. It's always been that way. Oh, no, she used to talk to someone about this, right? 
<laughs> Renasus will will just nod his head and like pat Tamil on the back and be like, well, "Don't give up looking. I'll help you if I can." So. I was going to say Slate was going to head down and look for some books as well. Okay, that's totally fine. <laughs> so he would, he would have been here for this conversation. Probably. That's all. Okay. I mean, I asked, uh, Tamil asked Slate about his glowing tattoos, so... Which he didn't even have. Right, exactly. So, like, it's it's the glowing tattoo gang down here right now. Renastis <laughs> reveals his own tattoo that's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nice chest piece going. Oh my god, it's like a big dragon. <laughs> Free play. Much about the Alusha. Uh, are they connected to forms of weathermancy? Nature. They, they seem to be connected to nature. When, when, when Flo, when Flo did that thing to the bees. <laughs> oh. Oh no. I you see hit a brow furl and then just. He has to like mentally smooth it over. <laughs> when when we we there, I, I could feel that she disturbed the spirits there, and then when I cast the spell to help us be sneaky, it blinded her instead. So I I think that it's it's related to that. It's it's nature and then and the spirits of places. This is very personal. <laughs> would you like my help researching it, or is this something that you would like prefer to do on your own? I I would I would like some help, please. Go ahead. Okay. With that being said, Renasis will grab one of the two books on the counter and plop into a chair and start thumbing through it. Okay. Uh, what languages do you know? Hmm. I know <laughs> common, dwarvish, elvish, giant, and undercommon. Okay, it's a very old form of Elvish, um, and it talks about some of the basics of the Aleutia, that they're sort of a combination of spirits tied to local natural sites, um, ancestors past. It's a common religion in the nation of Verda, uh, which is a primarily Elven and Fearbog um, nation, um, and very in touch with the land. Um, and often has to do with, if there's like the warlike aspect of it, of sort of um, calling upon tribal war ancestors or going to uh, burial sites um, of warriors to gain blessings for, for forthcoming battle. Um, there's also those who sort of uh, um, focus um, or tap into a local site's spirit, like the spirit of a river, or uh, that of a, tr of a forest, or something like that, um, or those that dwell there. Um, it's less common for an individual to have the sort of facility that Tanil has with it. Um, it seems like they're mostly like uh, one and done kind of situations, or local situations, rather than carrying it with you. Um, so you, you don't seem to... Um, come across that as often. Uh, you do come across um, that in um, um, I would say uh, after some follow-up reading, perhaps seeking a different tome or something like that, uh, you do come across that there is some um, appreciation for it, especially among the cloud carvers um, and in the location of the border city of Flywatch. Um, Flywash and Lunavir are the two border cities that separate the two reaches. They're right in the middle um, of the map. Uh, Flywatch is sort of technically part of the southern uh, shaded reach, and Lunavir is the twin. It's twin in the radiant reach. Um, gotcha. So that's something you kind of pick up on. Awesome. Um, so during this uh, research session, I will be taking, um, like, kind of synopsis notes on the books that I've read so that I can share them with Tamil. I'll also, uh, do a quick, like, just very rough sketch of the, um, tattoos that she had, but I will also add that, um, Renastas is particularly good at either remembering information, or if he can't remember it, or if he doesn't really, um, know that area of expertise, He's able to uh, figure out from whom or where he can get 
get that information. And that's from his background as a researcher. Yeah. Um, background, like D&D &D background. Yeah, um, for sure. So you would know that there's a couple, um, the Library of... Um, the Library of Candles is a temple to um, the um, god of knowledge um, uh, here, but also serves as sort of a general library and, like, large collection of tomes and stuff like that. I haven't been back in a little bit, um, but you ha you do know of an individual, um, have heard in, in passing, um, uh, a one uh, Brent Brentlin uh, Rodriguez. Um, you would know... Uh, her, she runs a bookstore um, in Tradestow Ward. You would know of her, maybe not her personally, um, but uh, she is a. You would know that she's a good resource to go, like talk to people about the books. If you're not wanting to go the like Library of Candles route. Do I know of any of the cloud carvers that I could contact? Personally, no. That's not again. That's not really in your purview necessarily. Um, they're very. Crucial. They're not very numerous, and they're very crucial. It takes a long time to train someone to be able to control the weather, um, and it also they're under like strict guard. There's the um, the Rainbow Order uh, of Knights, who are their like sworn protectors, um, and they get a lot of leeway as far as like uh, borders and um, pseudo exemption of some laws. Um, uh, they, they kind of are found, founded in the, um, the founding of the Rain Pact after the aftermath of the Dry Death Disaster in Umura. So um, uh, the Rain Pact is between Umura, Sanctus, and um, Verda, who all have these cloud carvers who practice cooperative weathermancy to make sure everyone's farms and everyone's crops and everyone's areas get the amount of rain that they need to survive. Um, it's still tempered by the locations, so like northern Umura um, gets less rain because it's a fiery desert area, um, but it still gets some so that they can survive. Um, go ahead and make a, a follow-up history check for me. That is a nap one. Okay, um, that's about the extent of your knowledge. Uh, on that subject. Today. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. All right, Slate, uh, what did you have for me? I think you were uh, ready to, to share something on your end. Also in the books. Yep. What are you searching, searching for? I'd be looking for anything on, like, I guess maybe, like, cross-referencing, like, a map of the, you know, Solnian Reach. Looking for historically significant areas, like, to the southeast. Of Sanctus or the Radiant Reach? Um... Sanctus is the nation, and then there's the so two. The map. Yeah. Um, to the right of like uh, her hometown, the name of which I can't remember. Bright Meadow. Bright Meadow. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Felina, would you mind grabbing uh, the maps for me? Sorry, I didn't uh, have them before. So thank you. Um, go ahead and make a investigation check. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It helps. Except for me. It's <laughs> <And flop. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 21. 21. Okay. Uh, with that roll, you actually find a rather older map. A um, couple things that you note. You're looking for areas sort of to the right of, um, to the which would be the east, of um, Bright Meadow. Um, that's still like well within the northern section of, um, here I'll lay out the map. Um, and just there was southeast of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So southeast of that. Um, I'm just going to move this. No longer in the basement. <laughs> um, so, uh, as previously mentioned, um, Lunavir and Flywatch are here uh, on the map. So, sort of dividing, we've got Solni, where you guys are now, Shadvir, and their respective reaches. Um, these are the two border cities. Um, Bright Meadow, here, close, one of the closest, aside from White Net, um, uh, towns to Solni. Um, southeast of that immediately would be Sunstream. Um, and then farther... Uh, East, you get uh, to Tinderbluff, where you have been actually previously um, with uh, Renastus and Flo uh, on a sort of previous venture. Uh, that's along the Donstones Mountains, uh, the Donstone Mountains. Um, further southeast, you're getting into the Faded Barrens, you're getting into the Shaded Reach, as well as some of the extended uh, regions. 
Um, you read some of the city names, like Nurwal still reads as Nurwal. Um, it's one of the larger, uh, like a military bastion city uh, on the eastern edge of the Shaded Reach. But some of the other town names aren't actually what they're uh, listed on here. Um, you get the sense that maybe this is an older map slash a map uh, done by someone who's Shadviran. Um, because these are sort of slur names that they've given the towns. So Flywatch, Bile Nest, um, stuff like that, Dr uh, Dusk Ditch. Those are like derogatory names that the that you gather the, and you're kind of picking this up uh, in, in, intuitively. Um, but let me, um, yeah. Uh, so you're getting a couple other uh, names. So Flywatch, um, it also goes by the name of uh, Lander Hall. Um, we've got um, uh, Bile Nest is also known as uh, Vest Shear. Bleak Bend is Nestleton. Um, and uh, you're, those are sort of the main um, several that are renamed. Uh, Dusk, Dusk Ditch is uh, Hill Kenny. So that kind of gives you some, uh, maybe, perspective on uh, the bias of mapmakers. Um, you also get, uh, um, going further along, uh, you, nothing's particularly catching your eye as you're, you're looking at this, um, but you do see at the very edge of the map, um, I mean, you can look if you'd like, if there's anything that's catching a Brandon's eye, um, to see uh, in the southeastern direction what you're looking to um, find. Um, but the last known city, which is sort of a neutral city somewhat mixed in with some verdant culture. It's got kind of its own, um, it's not, so on this map it's designated with dots as part of the Sanctus um, nation. And squares are anything that isn't Sanctus. Um, and uh, Siravel, here by the Cauldron uh, Lake, is the farthest southeast city that's on the map. That's why I was able to check the spelling. C I R E C I R I V E L. Um, so that's like the sort of south southeasternmost. Um, otherwise, uh, your next would be um, Bilenest, or the uh, name that I gave before for it, which was uh, Vestshear. So, yeah, I'll take that back if you finish with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're uh, you're doing as you're. And none of those names particularly stood out more than any other to me. Um, like a gut instinct, like that. Mm. Nothing in particular uh, really sets in, but obviously you're still like a little fixated on the southeast okay. region. Um, but uh, you're not sure where that feelings, come feelings coming from, and if it's particularly standing out to a particular like a region just just yet. Worthy of note, at least, some of these discrepancies. Um, after a little bit of time, you guys reading and stuff like that, um, those of you who are closer to the door, those of you in the library probably, the entrance, you hear like a <coughs> of like banging on the door. Um, and uh, after a little while, um, you hear like Lutheus, you kind of hear Lutheus answering the door and like, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's like very m sort of muffled and, and uh, murmuring a little bit. Um, and after a little while, he comes and finds, uh, bless you, cat. Uh, he finds uh, Tennille, um in the library. He says, "Oh, uh, cousin, uh, there is a uh, a Souls Guard captain um, here to see uh, you and your compatriots." Uh, uh, bring him into the library, I suppose. Um, he was asking if you could uh, if you could come to him, as it were, uh, at the front. Uh, okay. He, he, I invited him inside. He, he said he was uh, not staying for long. He just wanted to uh, come and, and have a quick chat. Okay, I'll go out. Okay, is anyone else going with? I'll Renastis? Go. I'll go. Okay, so he... Renastis will definitely come. Um, are you guys waking Flo? Sure that he looks no. nice and has and no... We'll, we'll, we'll leave Flo and I'm, or I'm guessing that Nick goes still upstairs. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave her, so the, the guys... Okay, <laughs> the guys roll down, um, and uh, Luther says, well, I'll leave you to it. Uh, good luck. And he kind of walks away, um, you know, getting his 
clothes a little bit nicer. Um, I'll just share a glass with Tennille, like... So, well, I don't know. So standing at the threshold is a um, Earth Genasi uh, individual, a tall, built man. Um, uh, he's got obsidian skin, like like the actual mineral, uh, inset with a sort of like galaxy of shining si- uh, silvery minerals in his bald head, um, kind of forming like a, like a around the crown of his, his head. He's got pure emerald eyes, um, and he bears like a large like warhammer that he's got. His resting his hand on like a cane, um, but for all that, he still seems pretty youthful. Um, he wears Soul's Guard armor, um, the sort of uh, standard uniform, but he's got the sun badge and lavender sh- uh, shoulder sash, indicating his rank as a guard captain. I am here to call upon the adventurers who recently spoke with a shanty soul priest known as Malone or Milne. Uh, you four match some of the descriptions I was get. Is is all of your party uh, present? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Forgive me. I am Captain Ogan Starcrown. Ogan Starcrown. Nice to meet you, Captain Starcrown. Um, uh, we're happy to come with you. However, I you, you do not need to follow me. I just need to ask you a few questions, as it were. He's got like a unusual uh, kind of Umarin. Uh, accented voice a little bit, which is pretty. Stand- There's a lot of Earth Genasi in Umara, so it makes stands to reason for you guys' ears. Um, he says, "I'll like pivot to Tanil and let Tanil lead the conversation." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Did you speak with this individual known as um, Malone or Milne, a uh, rather um, a shanty soul priest, um, salt of the earth type? We, we, we did. We brought a, um, a, a very unwell gnome that we, we encountered to him. We didn't want to leave her in the street, and um, that was the closest we, temple. I found her outside of a bar, isn't that right? Where was that again? Could you remind me? It was outside a bar. Um, uh, that was... I see, I see. And this individual, what? Uh, um, when was this? Um, I'm, I'm Lissa Spleen, I'll oh, you're notes. <laughs> going to have to forgive an old man's time recollection. Oh god. How long ago was that? that this was feels like years ago. It was like two days ago. It was a couple, uh, to my notes, it was a couple turnings ago. Yeah, because it was before... The young lady it was had before the, the Horn Skull Rock events. Yeah. Symptomology. I have never seen anything like that before. I see, and can you tell me when these, uh, what these symptoms... Consisted of? Well, she was dribbling a type of pink ooze, and her mouth was completely rotted. I had to look at my notes. <laughs> she, she was vomiting. We, 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 we thought she was um, hungover, and then we noticed that her vomit was not normal. And uh, she, upon closer examination, after she had lost consciousness, we realized that she was in desperate need of medical assistance. I see. He's got like a like a iron punched ring of like stone slates and he's like drawing on it with his bare finger as like taking notes. Sick. Nice. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, I and he kinda of flips over to the next one. Of the vomit with the priest because we thought it was highly unusual. Um, in, I see. Uh, this is highly unusual and it matches some Symptoms. Uh, damn, another. Uh, more of these pink tooths, as the, the uh, streets are calling them. Hmm. Well, I. Uh, can you confirm your whereabouts uh, over this past turning? <laughs> went in, what was that fantastic show you took me to, to Neil? Oh, yes, was that was. Uh, we went to the Mass Palace um, and watched. Oh, what was the name of the show? And honestly, that show was so... Tennille here had to take me out before we could watch the end of it, and I have, I've had to sit here almost for the past day and a half to decompress. Okay, uh, make a deception check with advantage. It's like partially true. Please roll well. Okay, with advantage, I got one, one's the other. Uh, 18. Okay. 
Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very well. Well, I uh, I refer. Was this? Uh, were you close to this? Uh, you dropped a light. Dude. So. Do drop delight. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you don't need to tell me anymore. Uh, in any case, um, right, right. Oh, I don't need to. Um, in any case, um, were you close with this uh, this priest? Uh, well, I've not been able to locate next of kin. I regret to inform you that he was found dead at the end of last turning. Um, supposedly, he was killed by the pink tooths he was looking after. Uh, his shanty temple was torn apart. And all of its occupants are currently missing. Uh, no, we out of, care, out of character shit. <laughs> uh, we 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 had never met him before that that day. We just we were looking for, we were passing through, and happened to upon this individual, and we're looking for the nearest temple, and that he was he was it. Good Samaritan, huh? Mm. I mean, I want to say he knew Cassio, the, another priest down in the. Uh... Good man, good reputation. We should let Cassiel know, but I don't. We have. Did, did he say? No, yeah, he did say that he knew Cassiel. Good man, good reputation. Um, interesting. This uh, it's pretty nasty business. Uh, the revelries of this city have not been uh, known to always stay within uh, safe, indulgent bounds. Uh, but Captain Glitter Crown, can we ask? You Star Crown, to have Captain Star Crown. <laughs> Forgive my memory. <laughs> I, as a, a man of science, I'm quite interested to hear about this this new illustrious. Uh, I'm assuming some sort of uh, chemical or substance. Could we offer you a, a and I'll look at Tennille, a cup of tea that we maybe we could sit and talk about it for just a moment, just a moment of your time, fifteen minutes. Make a persuasion check. Um, uh, boy. Oh, I got that grandpa swag. That's a 17. Uh, I must decline to join you inside. It would not look well if I was uh, seen. I mean, plenty of sergeants and captains are seen entering uh, noble houses, but uh, I still hold a little... uh, uh, You have a garden space, don't you, Tenille? Maybe we can sit there for a while. I'm just, like, nodding mutely, like, sure, yeah, what, yeah. I'm fine here, although I am willing to at least, I mean, you're probably just as trustworthy as some of the others uh, in the force, but um, as far as I know, uh, this stuff, still not sure what uh, what's going on, um, whether it's a disease or a substance, as you say, um, it's putting some pieces together. Uh, has all the uh, the earmarks of the sugar sand trade back in the Marcosi days. Uh, whatever it is, though, it seems like it hooks harder and hits worse if it is some sort of substance. The 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 the, 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 the uh, priest Amilni um, he did indicate to us that it did seem to be um, a drug of sorts. That was something that they once they started taking it, it was a compulsion. They had to keep taking it, and we we tried to find some of it left on on the 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 woman but it was gone there was there was nothing left to bring to him i see i see and uh there was no uh further samplings or anything that you could pick up any other further symptoms i know the uh street talk calls these individuals the pink tooths but um i'm not sure what the distribution situation is or how this is being spread um there's not much time to honestly being put into it since it's nothing technically illegal about uh, overindulgence here. Um, well, if I can, and I'll look, I'll like grab out a little notebook in my pocket and start flipping through it. Let's see. Um, well, what I had written from that event was that uh, her vomit was pinkish and had some gold sparkles in it, which was beautiful and mm. macabre. Um, her teeth were very bad, like I've mentioned before, and her had lesions on she had lesions on her tongue that I've not seen anything like that. But interestingly, when um, I tried to heal her up upon means in which I am uh, magically gifted, there was no effect. And now that I'm standing out here, um, getting the fresh air, 
I might be able to recall more, Captain, Captain Star Crown Glimmer. Um, if I were to remember more in the future, could I contact you in confidence? Uh, perhaps we could arrange a meeting um, at uh, the barracks um, or my office there. First, uh, first barracks house in the Glint Top Ward, uh, not far from the uh, Faith Walkway, as it were. Um, in any case, um, I would like to get all of your names. Uh, I, have, I have you down as the uh, um, Bewildered. <laughs> that, that is, that is After correct. checking with the um, the Lordbright office. That that is that is correct. Yes. All right, and uh, your individual names, any kind of. Oh, yeah, I'll give, give him my name. Very well, very well. Okay, so general introductions. Yeah. Um, and then I'll pass. He kind of, on. as like talking, as he's talking to himself, he's like, wish we still had Raelia around. I said he's still stuck with me. Um, he's kind of just like jotting down his notes and stuff. He kind of says it to himself. Well, and he's like, he like flips his like panels of clay. Um, and like tucks Are it in. You short staffed? Is that is that what I'm hearing? We're always been short staffed, underfunded, and with all these refugees coming in, and uh, regular oh. searches for uh, traders around every corner or southern nonsense, uh, been pushed to the brim. Some of us have even been uh, deployed, going around Estermel side of things to uh, help deal with some of the unease there, and of course the uh, the borders border cities as well, but uh, in any case, yes, if you're able to uh, follow up with some further information, I would be uh, greatly appreciated, but uh, well, don't leave anything I'm around. Gonna... Uh, I'd rather you uh, speak face-to-face -face about it. Definitely. I, I do have to say that I've done most of the talking. Could you tell us maybe what you know about this epidemic and how, just to help contextualize when we see something that may pertain to it? Well, it seems like that you know much as much, if not more, than I do. Um, we found several dead uh, over the course of the last few turnings, more and more cropping up here and there. Um, some troubling rumors about one of the Scoven boys. Um, and, uh, but those were put, put to bed rather quickly. Um, I guess money changed hands. Um, and uh, in any case, not a lot of effort being put forward aside from myself, but uh, I've had a bit of experience with, as I said, back in the Morkazi Sugar Sand days um, with uh, Aurelia, um, and uh, got my share of exposure to uh, the sour side of overindulgence. Um, in any case, I'm uh, hoping to... Uh, sort of analyst or chemist on your team? Uh, we don't have those kind of resources. Uh, hmm. Very well. Is <clears throat> is uh, Aurelia still around, or it sounds like she'd be helpful with her? Uh, Aurelia no longer uh, works as part of the uh, the force, as it were. Um, she left not longer after the Morkazi collapse. Um, joined a adventuring group or something. Said there wasn't a lot of point in protecting people who wanted to get trashed and overindulged. Um, Maybe she could think be the, uh, in a consulting fashion. Well, uh, if you find her... Um, Do you know what group she told? Uh, I believe they're the Misbloods, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, some uh, sort of misfit other nobles. Uh, she's one of the Scovens, although she really hated being known as that. Um, if I recall correctly, she uh, had some rather uh, strong feelings against her family. Um, a lot of history uh, back there from after what happened to uh, Apollyon and um, you know, like I said, during the Morkazi days, not uh, not the most pleasant, um, as it were. But in any case, uh, old history. Um, to my knowledge, she hasn't had too much dealings with the Force. Uh, any contact with me? I was her sort of deputy at that time. Uh, I'm just rambling now. I'll, I'll kind of like shuffling a little bit embarrassedly and kind of stands back to attention. Says. Um, if you have contact with her, then uh, I would appreciate uh, putting in a word regarding this information. But uh, to my knowledge, she has not 
stayed in the city for more than a few turnings um, since her initial departure. Um, I believe her group was last uh, seen here during the Lorbright enrollment and uh, quickly left uh, two turnings after to uh, a turning, turning or two ago, actually. Um, just right around all this uh, flicker business. Um, probably heading out to investigate something sort of that nature. Uh, turned a little harder after what she saw and uh, had to deal with um, back in those days. Aurelia did. Uh, anyway, thank you for your time. And if you have any follow-up, like I said, uh, First Barracks, Glintock Ward, by the Faith Walkway. Thank you, Captain. By the Faith. Thank you for your time. Kind of as he's like leaning on his very heavy warhammer cane. Does he lean? Does it look like he has like a limp? It does, yeah. Okay. It looks like his left leg is kind of uh, like you can see um, it's got like metal plating reinforcing it, but it looks like there's like cracks and uh, like permanent denting or damage to his his left leg. So it's the three of us standing there. Four of us. Four of you. Four Cackler's us. there. He's Four. Kind of taking it all in. Yeah, I didn't, okay. have, I didn't have a lot to contribute. You can't see him behind the two of us, but... Uh, <laughs> I was I do, I'd like to bounce upon you guys, and Rolexus will dig in his pockets for a small wrapped package, and as he unwraps it, it is a dead rat. The dead rat that he picked up. This, coupled with the things that we saw in the subsequent room, makes me think maybe this was a test subject or a, a recombinant host, or or do you guys just think this is a dead rat? Do you also think that I would just carry around a dead rat just for the sake of carrying around a dead rat? I, I, uh, I'm going to pull out the little packing so that has like all the different perches on there and point out the six snakes and then, um, and then like hold it for that like point of the rat and like point of the snakes. Oh, another point in the same that supports this storyline. Thank you, Chirps. <laughs> That's why I was asking if maybe he had a chemist I could, in faith, turn this over for them to analyze in some, some way. I start shaking my head and I flip the paper over and write down, rats equal snake food. Rats do equal snake food. Thank you very much for that lesson, Jervis. Your contributions are always well noted. <laughs> <laughs> or, or did chir- we see any evidence of snakes there? Maybe if what Chirps is suggesting that it's not the rats that are interesting, but the snakes. That would be my guess. Maybe, I, I mean, I, I have never heard of a snake that could do something like this, but that doesn't mean one doesn't exist. Maybe if they're, they're, they're venom. I've never heard of snakes. I'm like, wait. Snakes <laughs> would have a very weird There are life. no snakes in Salt Lake. No snakes. But perhaps some... some secondary metabolism in the species. I don't know. Should I hold on to this dead rat or should I just like toss it over? I I, I think the dead rat is just a dead rat, Grandpa. Can I, can I, I, I like, like you were gonna I will it. I'll <laughs> hand it over to uh to Slate. Oh, well, <laughs> looking at Slate, I'll like put my hands out like away. this. You're hungry. I have snacks. Well uh, like once he does that I'm just like between my fingers, just like cast a web of like fireballs between my fingers and just disintegrate the little rat. Okay, it's like a melting, oh. sloughing dead rat that you've got all over your hands. I'm gonna like wipe it off on Slate's shirt. Uh, could you? I'm gonna press to digitate the mess away. Uh, right around now is when Galen, uh, Uncle Galen, uh, returns um, uh, with Bria and Nadia in tow. Um, and it looks as if. Um, uh, Uncle Galen kind of comes to the threshold where you guys are all congregating and sees this exchange. <laughs> and he says, Perhaps uh, we might renegotiate the terms of our accommodations. Um, and he's looking like extremely tired. Um, oh, hail, Galen. We were just preparing our turnover uh, festivities. We were practicing a new type of firework. I am so sure you were. Work out very well. <laughs> I'm, can I like try to do like little like fireball spins in my hand, like shoot very well. <laughs> um, Tanil, uh, are you able to gather your other two companions? I believe you have. I have some news for all of you um, that might be of value. Uh, Flo is is not well. 
Um, and Anitka is awaiting her parents upstairs, and he, I'm like kind of like looking at the ceiling. I'm looking at Bria and Nadia, like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> Um, you notice that Bria's, uh, both hands are intact. <laughs> oh! Um, oh. As, it, as, it, as it happens. Uh, well, noticing that, I'll kind of, like, eyebrows raise, and, uh, I'll, um, I'll go grab a little one. They're bandaged, um, but, like, okay. yeah, seem to be intact. Um, well, perhaps, I, I will address all of you when you're all awake, so perhaps I come the new turning. Um, I, uh, but for now, and he kind of rubs at his temples, I will be turning in. And he kind of sweeps past you in like a swash of robes um, and just like heads to his, uh, um, he kind of looks back, he like looks like very haggardly and sadly over like the like loving embrace and like coupled movement of Bria and Nadia and he looks like very aged um, and sort of almost like envious um, for a brief second and then just like heads on up. Okay. Um... I'm gonna guess Tanil kind of clocked that, and he's a lovely boy. A little more suspicious. Okay, I'll love him. Um, Bria and Nadia go up to their room and see you there, oh. um, and see you in your state, and immediately Nadia's like, "Little Weaver, what happened?" Uh, and uh, Bria's like, "Where's Black Mist?" Dead. He's dead. He's very dead. And then he was undead. And then we killed him. Um. What? And she'll sort of gently, like, grab both of Bria's hands. Yes. Galen Kelnara uh, came through for me, and we came to an arrangement, as it were. Um, nothing. And Nadia's like, don't start that. It was totally a altruistic deed, and he specifically said that you're not beholden to him, uh, despite your stupid customs. And um, Bria's sort of like, Nadia, I've given enough today. I think I'm going to be, I'm ready to turn in myself, uh, but it is good to see that you are well and well rid of Black Mist. Uh, I'm interested to hear what your uh, state, uh, how you got into it and how your adventures went, but I'm glad, so glad, and she kind of takes you in that you are well. Yes. Perhaps a bath might be of uh, some value. Uh, yes. I, I apologize for my state. I, I had this whole thing planned about, like, I refused magical healing because of honor, and, you know, but it, it seems irrelevant now. Nadia sort of... <laughs> uh, and Bria kind of like, oh. It's not... Uh, uh, it's, mm, it's fine. Fine. It's fine. Um... I've got both hands. That's what we're at. And uh, why don't you get cleaned up and get healed and restored? Um, and then we can um, enjoy the next few turnings before the, uh, the mid years. As you can see, we've got a few things started. Um, we could uh, maybe enjoy a few turnings of downtime, as it were. Um, I am certainly. And you can see Bria's like. And Nadia's sort of like. The healing sessions took a lot of, of toll, um, and uh, things were, uh, we were waiting on uh, Galen's return after he did an errand after our session. Um, in any case, uh, we were, he was meeting for quite a bit with a few other uh, folk, but he said he had an errand to run after our, um, to, to collect us after our healing session. So, in any case, um, I think we are glad that you're well. Um, once you've bathed, you're welcome to come and uh, enjoy uh, sleeping here with us or with your friends, whatever you choose. Um, it's glad um, we're so glad that you've made it out okay. Just just smiling. I think I, I might come back and, and sleep in the room with you. If that's okay with the two of you. Just not too late, Bria says. She's already like <laughs> uh, on quick, the bed. Quick, quick bath and, and I'll be back up. No, uh, and she's kind of already like pretend snoring. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> not really not. The first time I've dealt with that in the past three turnings, and that guy will go down and take a bath. Sounds good. So as things are kind of winding down for the evening, 
what's everyone doing? Are we just going to settle in for another long rest here? Um, or anything else anyone wants to do before they turn in? It's like clearly towards the end of the turning. Can I try one more uh, little origami for a little bit? Sure. I'm trying to master this thing, but I have a plan. Got it. Slide a hand. Ooh, that's better. 16? Significantly better. Um, you know, still troubling. Some trouble to keep it airborne with your, um, your sort of uh, manifesting of tinkering. Um, I, I came up with a logical because I get infused that items become magic items. It's like it's it's not a magic item on the list exactly, but you know I can infuse items with magic, so that's that's, that's the logic I was going with. Okay, just remember that those infusions uh, you can have two active at a time, and if you make a new one, right now. Uh, yeah. you undo the previous one. Yeah. So um, just be aware of that. But um, you, I believe there's also like a shorter term ability that lets you like temporarily animate an item or tool. Okay. Um, I'll look into it a little more. So uh, have a look at that under the rules. You should be able to have quite a few items tinkered. You, I have four. Neat. But uh, seeing, seeing chirps do this, I'll... Uh, oh, you're just the person I want to talk to. Could you... Uh, with that folding craft you have, do you think you could make me like a nice box just to fit a very small trinket? Just to, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy, just something to present. I'm gonna like crack my little uh, kinku hands. Your little talons. Pull, yeah. pull out a piece of paper and attempt to make like a little folded box. Okay, yeah, I'd say you're able to do it. The size would be for like the, uh, the earring. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little larger than, um, like, uh, it's like a palm-shaped cube that you end, end up making. It's like a folded, um, thing. It's a little, like, lopsided, a little, like, disangular, um, I'll but... I'll like, a piece of thread, I'll, like, just kind of rip a piece of thread out of my, part of my clothing make, like, a little bow on top, and I like, hand it over. I could not have asked for a more perfect specimen. Thank you, Chirps, I owe you. And, um, I'll take that and I'll drop the earring in the box and I'm also going to include a, uh, a note saying, um, if you need a hand at the docks, say the word and we'll go. <laughs> and I'll fold That's it up, a... put it in the box, Big and ass. then I'm going to yeah. put it next to, um, Flo's boots. <laughs> I assume she's not sleeping with her boots on. She might be. She might be. We really she like might be fully it's generally like, accepted oh. that you don't sleep in your armor. Um, <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> well, I don't know. Slate, if Slate's putting her to bed. Yeah. Like, so it maybe in her case, yeah, she might still be. But uh, you lay it there for her to find. Um, but otherwise, you guys settle in for a sleep, long rest. Yeah. yeah um, okay. If at any point, and I can, you know, how sometimes you kind of wake up a little at night, she'll probably peek in and peek it on Flo via Mr. Bittens and go back to sleep. Still just totally out. <laughs> um, but uh, for the sake of uh, brevity, uh, you guys all get the uh, benefits of a long rest. Um, you know, those of you who have exhaustion points, remove one exhaustion. Um, <laughs> Away with y'all. And uh, regain all your spell slots, hit points, hit dice, all that kind of stuff. Um, As I'm getting ready for bed, sorry, I'm talking a lot this session. Um, okay. I'm going to take out different ingredients and start tasting them, um, and I am going to switch out some spell slots. I don't know, Nicholas, do you normally, or switch out some spell options? Do you want me to send you a message of what I'm switching? No, that's okay. Um, you know, I'm, unless something comes up that seems uh, incongruous to me, I'll probably just trust your uh, okay. capacity to, to do that and, uh, you know, follow the rules as laid out. Um, gotcha. I am also switching out spells. Yeah. Uh. I have alchemist <laughs> supplies. I just. So sleep. Oh. Yeah, well, I, um, I, I let spells. As you're sleeping, um, you know, drifting on the zephyrs of your rest, you feel weightless and floaty as your consciousness sort of separates from the body in dreams. Um, it almost feels as if your etheric sleep self is sort of being blown by a powerful wind and pushing you far from Solni in your current mental resting landscape. Uh, you find yourself looking down upon a village of modest shape, um, not dissimilar to Bright Meadow in terms of general outlay, although it looks like it's smaller in population and smaller in footprint. 
Um, there are sort of blurry shapes among the other buildings um, that look like in the shape of like eight-sided basalt columns and low stone huts and menhirs that line the streets. Um, kind of, like I said, blurry. It's kind of hard to tell if they're like pillars or buildings or, or structures of any kind. Um, and then you sort of seem to fall underground. Um, you're not sure if this is the same location or somewhere else, but you see like an underground lake that's still as glass. Um, and then you sort of like, like almost like you're uh, a zombie clawing from the earth. You like claw up above the surface and stabbing light just sears into your eyes as you find um, the surface light again in your dream state. Um, you awake again uh, in come the new turning and you sort of have your eyes are wet. You're like you've been crying um, and you feel like this deep pang of loss and yearning. Um, a deep-seated brick of sorrow that sort of settles into your the masonry around your soul um, uh, for a place that you can't recall but you know exists. Um, your whole body is sort of angled strangely as you wake in that sort of semi-sleep paralysis, semi-numb uh, situation. Both your arms are completely numb and you they're feeling a sort of returning at an abnormally slow pace. Uh, your left arm is pointing directly like between south and west and the right arm seems to bend first south and then east in like an elbow kind of shape. Painful pins and needles are sort of erupting over your fingertips as eventually feeling returns to them and you awake fully. Hmm. You should lay in bed and pro you know, process that. Okay. Um, so all of you come to in the morning. Um, all that kind of stuff. Renos, just go ahead and roll for your potion if you'd like. Your concoction. Um, Ooh, yes. Um, but uh, it is um, the 89th turning um, of second shard. Two days away from mid-year's turning, um, and with that, that's sort of the um, immediate deadline of information and stuff like that. So we've got some kind of downtime and uh, things that you, no immediate enemies to crush or uh, in pursuit or allies to save. We have lumens we're looking for. Uh -huh. Possibly. This was the first deadline, but oh, yeah, there, there were two. Right. He would right, give us yeah. more money if we got it, but and he's that's not right. happy, but... You know, yeah, do yeah, we yeah. care about his feelings? That's true. Um, upon awakening, Flo, you find the little package uh, there that uh, Renas just set for you. This little folded paper package that feels like it's got something in it, wrapped in a bow. I'm gonna, like, look at it a little bit closer. And, like, look around the room. And just, like, slowly, like, untie the bow and look inside. Yeah, uh, uh, so you do, and you find Renastus' note about willing to help at the docks um, and you see the wave stud that you knew Captain Blackmist wore um, so you see it there for you I'm just gonna have like silent tears just oh. coming down and I'm gonna take out one of my earrings and replace it with the wave and then like still have my earring but you know <laughs> right, right, um, right. I'll get rid of some of that <laughs> not to get too direct but um, who had all the items? From that, do we uh, want to? Did you have? No. Do you have the capacity to identify them? I do we, not. Because it requires a hundred um, gold piece worth of pearl. I totally forgot. Actually, could we have said I did three identifies before I went to sleep? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's my limit per day. If yeah, that's your limit per day, okay. So what three would you like? To, yeah, that's fine. Um, what three would you like to identify? Sword, sword, sword. I'm gonna check out the sword, the flanged mace. <coughs> We've got uh, another <laughs> two potions plus two red potions, the like expanding, contracting red bead potion, and the like bubbling orange potion. Um, we've also got, you said the sword, you said the um, flanged trumpeted stick. Um, we've got the, um, oh, sorry, he's got one potion of sort of like a blackish, um, like purplish mist that was also picked up, uh, or fog that's inside of it. Um, we've also got the eye patch and the coin. Eye patch, plus the third. Okay. Alright, so in each case you sort of ascend mentally to a room full of objects floating uh, that are sort of like etheric and non-formed and you sort of find them and reach out and grab them towards you and see like this book appear and a page with it described as like your 
coming to a higher place of knowledge that already has the information and you're just seeking out that particular thing. Um, so you said you want to start with a sword? Yeah. This is the Salt Creek Short Sword. It's a magical short sword that requires attunement. Um, it is caked in a sort of crystalline hues of uh, brine and stinging ocean salt. Um, the attuned user can cast Create or Destroy Water once a turning. Uh, the water is salt water, if you create it. While the attuned uh, wielder is in or on salt water, uh, the Salt Creep Short Sword is a plus two short sword. Ooh, nice. um, next is the Boomstick, um, Boom. which is a magical club that requires attunement. It also serves as an arcane focus. Um, thunder spells cast from it deal plus one damage. That can be used as a club, which when it hits, deals plus 1d4 thunder damage. It has one charge. Um, currently it has zero charges, but um, it can retain a charge during a thunderstorm. Um, if, the wielder, when, if the wielder has it in the midst of a thunderstorm, it regains a charge. If the wielder scores a critical hit with the club, um, it regains a charge. If you take thunder damage it regains a charge, or if you cast a first level or higher spell that deals thunder damage, it regains a charge. You can use an action to expend a charge to cast a 15-foot cone of thunderous detonation, forcing all creatures in the area to make a DC 13 con save, or take 3d12 thunder damage and be pushed five feet away and be deafened for one minute. Half damage, no push, and no deafen on a pass. Uh, whenever Boomstick is reduced to zero charges or gains a new charge past its first charge, you roll a d20 on a one, the boomstick is destroyed, and you cast Shatter, centered on yourself. Hmm. Oh. Stick goes boom. Indeed. So right now it's at zero. It's safe to get it back up to one, but anything further than one, you're risking the thing. And if you get it back down to zero, you're risking the explosion. So, yeah. Okay. No matter what, you're risking it. Yeah. Uh, sewn Eye of the Shade Seer is the eye patch. Uh, wondrous item requires attunement. Uh, once every ten tun every ten turnings, the attuned user may cast Scrying without any spell slots, on any target that is in the lower half of the world. In the shaded air areas of the world. Ooh. Um, so you'd still need to know who you're doing it to, or like have a description or something like that, but you can target anyone as long as they're in that region. Um, while in magical or mundane darkness, the attuned user may use a bonus action to say Knight's Eye and gain the, uh, themselves a sight to 60 feet, as if the darkness, even with even if it was magical, is bright light, uh, well lit room. Ooh. So it allows you to see even through dark, magical darkness if you use the bonus action. While you're using this enhanced uh, dark vision, uh, you're blind when not in darkness, though. So it's can like you're extra, you extra sensitive. Can these, these be activated? Yes, these last for one minute or until you use a bonus action to attach the eye and say, shot eye. Okay. And it turns off. So those are the three items. I've got the cards for them here. Cool. Go ahead and give you them out as you okay. see fit. So I'll keep the rest for myself for now. So, boomstick. Do we have anyone who can cast thunder spells? I can cast a thunder spell. Okay. But I don't particularly see myself as someone using it. I cannot cast thunder spells. I, I don't have any in my arsenal also right cast now. A thunder spell. No, yeah. also mm. We're not. Ren? Boomstick to Ren? I'll send you a picture. Okay, thank you. I think you're the only one that can, yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, no. I only cast Thunder Wave, which is an AoE Thunder spell anyway. So unless you get another one for free, no spell slot to get to trigger the effect. Plus it's a 1d4 extra damage club if you ever club somebody. Okay. But, Am I good with clubs? It's a simple weapon, so if you can use simple weapons, you can use a club. So does club damage plus 1d4? Yes. So oh, club, club is 1d4, and then the it's an extra 1d4 on top of that. Yep, but obviously different yeah. damage types. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't need a ticket if, if you'd rather have it. I don't have much offensive. I'm, I'm, um, as we saw yeah. in the last session, I can't really do a lot of offensive things. <laughs> I'm happy to give up my magic cleaver for it. Just to just off your eyes, because I don't want to be a magic item. Also, you shouldn't have that. You're not going to use it. No, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Right. <laughs> so, sure. to you, I know you tried to steal the cleaver, so I'll give you the cleaver. I totally forgot about the cleaver, honestly. <laughs> All right, so you guys can distribute magic items, um, uh, maybe uh, maybe afterward or offline. Um, but I'm just gonna get to one more thing, um, kind of towards the tail end of the thing. But as you guys descend and um, 
uh, Galen Kelnar is there at the bottom of the stairs, like waiting for you guys. Clearly, super exhausted looking. Looks like he didn't get any sleep. Um, haggard look. And he said, says, Tenille and company, I am. We are at a uh, challenging time, and I'm going to encourage some caution amidst all of you. Political forces and tensions are rising amidst these flickers and then other events that are happening. Um, and I believe that you must be made aware of a few situations um, as you seem to be getting directly involved in some rather uh, poignant players on the noble stage as your entanglement with Folian uh, at the Quipper Mansion seems to have uh, asked around. I have good connections, as it were. Uh, seems to be uh, stirring up rather things. I would strongly advise you to steer clear of direct confrontation with that one. Uh, I should mention that uh, at the current stage, many uh, I've been meeting with High Diplomat Athamer and uh, a few others among my order, um, and uh, we have noticed. Uh, a trend among many Solian nobles and glim Glimmer council members that wish to lay blame for the flickers on Shadvir, who deny the involvement, but say that it is good for Northerners to taste the South's pain, as they experience flickers most regularly. Both sides are working to gain advantage of the other without sparking off a third Sancturian war. Several Solian agents and spies seem to have gone missing in the South, particularly in the Southeast. Current intelligence also indicates that the gate restrictions that were added were not able to prevent the Chillbloom Agency from getting a few members inside the city. The Prismere is taking a stance of strict neutrality and declining to offer any public aid in deterring and detecting Chillbloom agents. Uh, Solni has recently also been successful in cultivating the Merc Moths, whose worms create the specialized shade cloth that serves as the primary export from Shadvir. This is furthering tensions, as obviously it might cause additional economic strain uh, and advantage placed in Solni over Shadvir. Uh, my members uh, of my organization have also uh, been able to meet with me, those who have made it to Solni, and there's been uh, quite a lot of fixation between both reaches on one another during these times, perhaps understandably, but it has caused us to ignore other troubles across uh, Verda and Umura, as well as fringe locations uh, in Sanctus, reporting disturbing powers surfacing here or there, uh, even disappearances of traveling Twilight Dawn arbiters and sword scholars who serve as neutral justices in these areas, and even in Sanctus. Most worryingly, a few cloud carvers in Umura and Verda are, and even in Sanctus's fringe locations, have gone missing. You may have noticed we are late to rain. Uh, it is believed that that is why, although uh, our uh, current leaders in the Mist Gardens have said that uh, we should be due for some today. I have uh, coordinated with a few of these, uh, of a sword scholar and a few other individuals who seem to be uh, Noticing some drawing interest towards Cyravel. Um, rumors of some sort of artifact or anomaly there. That is being worth... Uh, no no report has happened. Uh, no return journey or report has happened back yet. Um, but I'm also worried for political figures whose attentions you have caught uh, with your recent exploits. I cannot intervene or prevent uh, your... upcoming meetings that you might uh, be in store for, but I urge you to consider all of your options carefully before jumping too far into any decisions. May I ask whose attention we have claimed? I would say that uh, most of the nobility has now at least given some attention to your presence. Um, I know uh, Lord Tychomir is particularly I rate with some of the uh, things that you are said to be tied up with, but it is uh, the Shining Hand who 
I believe you'll be meeting with soon enough. And, and what, what specifically have we done besides rescue our friends from a man who was imprisoning them in some, some hellhole? Do not misunderstand me. I'm not placing blame. I'm merely informing you of what might is to come. I do not know what they specifically wish to discuss with you, although the Lord of Lumens obviously has his uh, priorities around uh, some sort of... Uh, missing situation um, that uh, you seem to have been caught up in. There are also the rumors around what happened in the assault poles um, that seem to be stirring the pot, but uh, as for what Pulesa Fane wants with you, I can only guess, but uh, again, I would urge a particular caution. Um, not that I'm saying that you should not uh, assist her. Obviously, do what you can to avoid deeper entanglement in uh, what might be construed as treason. However, I uh, would suggest that you also uh, take caution not to put your trust too far in anyone's hands. Um, as for your involvement with Folian, I can commend your bravery. However, um, he has quite a bit of pool uh, among the nobility here and in other locations, um, in Lunavir as well. I am worried that uh, you might have stirred a hornet's nest, as it were. So I would ask that you be extra on your guard. Um, our laws are also facing some challenges with these traveling judges and safe roads fading, uh, Vientin caravans disappearing or dwindling, the impartial justices are waning. Um, I know many prisms are migrating from the prismier to fill the gaps of these missing judges and villages. Um, trying to improve education for their own merit. Um, and movement in Estermel speaks of very deep unrest and rebellion, uh, troubling rumors there, um, and an individual known as the White Shadow who seems to be gaining quite a bit of following and protest against Solni and the treatment of other Radiant Reach folk outside the city's walls. Um, I will not place my judgment and own opinions, but I only mention these things to further highlight the unrest and tense situation. The more that you get stirred up in high optic political movements and actions that are resounding across the nobility's scope might come back to bite you or otherwise disturb the power, the, the balance of power and draw the ire of those who already benefit from the existing balance. Many things are in flux, and I will maintain my assistance with you as much as I can. However, direct aid may be uh, more limited. Um, and I should ask that uh, you keep a quieter profile if you're going to remain in my house. Elsewise, I can help secure some funds if you need them alone, uh, as it were, for housing elsewhere in the city that is preferable, and you're not able to keep a quieter tone. Again, I merely wish to warn you of the upcoming concerns, and perhaps encourage you to prepare accordingly for meetings and other interests from various parties. It seems that, and you kind of looks at Flo and the Cackler, it seems that there are many who are interested in your property and past, particularly among those who have recently made their way into the city, I believe in your case, these Chillbloom agents. I'm gonna, I kind of shudder as you said. In any case, the pot is being stirred, and the players, whatever the source of these flickers are, all players involved are getting more tense and bound to act more rashly against unknowns such as yourselves. So I'd advise you to step carefully. Um, I'm 
um, towards kind of the letter. Um, we will take that under advisement, Uncle. Um, in the meantime, and please don't feel free to act upon it, um, but may I give you something for safekeeping? Very well. What is it? Uh, I'll pull out the letter. Um, this is... Uh, we're being blackmailed by a um, rather incompetent blackmailer um, regarding the issue with Lord Um I don't know uh, how this will uh, fall out, but um, I feel like it might be safest for this evidence to be in the hands of a third party, and I'll hand over the letter. Very well. And, um, and he kind of glances at it for a second. And you get the sense that he like read it in a second. Like he just like glances and then puts it away. And All right. And in fact, he, uh, yeah. So he he like stows it in his robes. He says, "Very well. I am sure that should things come to a more desperate case situation, again, I would refer to you uh, to exercise caution." in running into this tumultuous change and chaotic shift around the law. But it's safe to say that, yes, I will keep this safe should it ever be needed to be used. Uh, and then I will um, pull out three gold and hand it to him, the remaining balance of our one. Very well. Thank you for returning it. And... Uh, Mr. Galen, if I, if I may... I look to cure our myopticism in this situation, and I'd like to know how you fit into it, and what is your role, and what are your viewpoints, just so we can understand each other better. You'll have to forgive me, I have met Tennille recently, and although I consider us friends and, and allies, I don't know anything about you and your family except for what I've heard from others. So if you could please illuminate me and my friends here as to your position. Make a persuasion check. Oh boy. Hmm. Please hold. <laughs> I was picking out spells. Uh, persuasion, you say? Hmm? Indeed I do. <laughs> Alan and I were talking about what... Um, traits I have in person and oh my god that was a that one <laughs> as is appropriate <laughs> suffice to say that I'm suffice to say that I, I am well connected through station and practice I am close friends with a high diplomat Athamer who has been running end between li trying to liaise and put out many fires between the two reaches of this recent accusation and disastrous flicker events um, as for my personal stake in this, uh, it is multifaceted, but suffice to say that I am of the opinion that it is best for me to hold some things close to the chest. And I, like many arbiters, prefer to remain neutral as long and as thoroughly as possible. Of course, certain forces he kind of, again, like, absentmindedly rubs at his temples, and uh, for a second he looks quite, like, distraught. And circumstances <clears throat> of late have forced my hand one way or another. But it is safe to say that I... I care for my family in my own way. And for guests under my roof provided that you follow the rigid safe struct structures and neutrality that I myself set forward. If you are not doing so, then there will need to be a parting of the ways for a time until things settle over. Um, my primary interest is in the research and preservation of knowledge and the upholding of the law. But as I said, these things seem to be shifting of late, and that is all I care to say. You'll 
have to forgive my inquiry. Uh, for lack of a better idiom, you don't sniff at the hand that provides. And I am quite gracious for your hospitality. That is an interesting choice of words, but in any case, I uh, am glad that you have made use of it. Would it be wise for us at any point to leave Sulmi, or would that, do you think, would make it worse, or should we not leave ever at all? Perhaps we should go out to Cyrodiil. We should do that. Is it <laughs> wise to stay in a nest of vipers? In any case, we are... You are not necessarily free to act on your own, and those who wish to meet with you will meet with you, regardless of what you do. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like the whole continent is the nest of vipers, and it... Certainly our country is, at, the, at any rate. What better way to, to develop a resistance to the venom than to be within the nest of vipers? Perhaps, if one does not succumb. In any case, I suggest that you make use of your time wisely here and do whatever it is that you think is best along your own paths that will help secure the safety of those you care about. In any case, I am much spent from these last few turnings. I believe I will attempt some further reflection. And kind frankly, of looks see, aimlessly off to the side. Frankly, forgive my rudeness. It's never been a strong suit. It looks like you could use some sleep and maybe a bath. Yeah. I appreciate your concern, but I do not think that is likely. Watching him, like, I guess... I mean, obviously he doesn't look great, but is there anything that, like, stands out as being particularly worrisome about his behavior? Make an insight check. Oh, I'm not really bad tonight, guys. Ten. I mean, you can see some cracks in his otherwise pretty, like, normal, stern, placid mask of, like, cool intellect and calm control, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously very worrying in general because it's atypical of his character. And I have certainly put him through a lot of shit. <laughs> um, it's... Whatever's going on, it seems personal. Okay. But it's hard to know other than that. Okay. Okay. Says, well, good day to you, and if you stay, I hope you enjoy the Midyear Turning Festivals. Kind of ascends the stairs. I think we all need to have a talk. About how we're getting to Cerebro? I think so. I'm, and like, in particular, I'm looking at the flow and terms. Yeah, I, I'm less <laughs> concerned about... I mean, we should know whoever's coming after you for those explosions and shout your thing. Um, yeah, I mean, you... I certainly... Tenille, is your uncle normally that cold and uncaring? Something is going, something is not quite right. I think that his demeanor represents a intense level of caring. I mean... One that goes beyond his own physical well-being and capacity to give care, yet he still does. I mean, yes, yeah, sure, for his country, but to abandon your family and for just to be, to have neutrality seems very uncaring to me. No, something, something... Something is going on that is... Do you think we could talk to Lulu about it? I I might be able to convince uh, Lou to tell yeah, me more. my intrusion. That's also like a very personal family affair, but I just hope he's doing okay. Do you think it's... It seems... I mean, a lot of this just seems to be political news, and it all uh, maybe seems like it How was... How can it not, based on what he said about... The, the worms, like this is an yes. upturning. But he, I don't know. I got let's let's let it, let's head upstairs and not do this like <laughs> in his living room. Yeah, well, yeah. it's the beginning of the day, so you guys are welcome to go, um, you know, wherever you like. If you want to, if you have a destination in the city in mind, you can do some walk and talk. 
Um, or else settle into the, like the den or something and have a discussion. Well, have a discussion, but actually have money now. I have some spell paper I want to exchange for maybe some fine Ooh, clothes. shopping? We could go shop. I would like, we should return the, the fancy clothes we borrowed from oh, Julius. Oh, we should probably <laughs> talk to Julius. I have been so fantasy stressed about making sure that these clothes are okay and return to him, all right? <laughs> Brandon yeah. does not look happy at the idea of shopping. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should, we should, yeah, go to Julius. I've had, I keep hearing rumors about this yarn store, and I, I want to, I want to get... I'll just roll a piece of paper that just says two words. Giant toad. No, you're, you're not Rasputin. I, I'm, I'm kind of, like... like you told me to look for a store, man. I gotta do it. Uh, you... I said to look for a bookstore, in fact. But, uh, <laughs> great bookstore. Shall we, um, shall we move we... into the den and maybe talk about our day's plans? I, mean, I... I think the cackler has this figured out. I don't know what cryptic message she is referring to. I mean, I, I think he wants to buy a giant toad. I'm not sure there's and so that much. Do you know toads need a level of humidity that cannot be sustained with this impending constant sunlight? What did that know? You know surely we can't find a toad here. That can know. Are there toads in Solmi? Um, for the most part, uh, I would say that um, they're not among the local kept pets. Um, however, uh, there certainly are uh, numerous uh, amphibious wildlife and things like that that uh, proliferate around the mist gardens, um, which are quite heavily humi humidified. Um, of course, with proper um, care and preparations, you could probably make it happen as like a pet situation. But um, otherwise, not some. There are a few like um, you know, like salt brine toads that live in uh, some of the slums and stuff like that. They're rather small. Um, but, um, and we feed it more. but, uh, yeah, you'll have to, have to do some further research. Uh, that's, that's all I would say you know for now. Uh, Neko will tell him that. It's like, well, it might be hard. Though, I suppose if we were going to explore Shadvia, that might be, at some point, a different story, or... We, we also have to keep in mind, um, you know, it's part of why Lulu's taking care of Mr. Slimy. It can be kind of hard to have a pet on an adventure. We should really research before we um, go uh, around <laughs> buying random pets that we don't know what they are. What a concept. <laughs> I feel this is some extra campaign. Uh, <laughs> this is campaign uh, previous, unrecorded, bleeding into our current campaign. Uh, yeah, I feel like a neck making good pet choices. I am offended. Uh -huh. yeah, maybe Timio got a pet when they were on the streets that immediately died. Yeah. Well, I just hold it, uh, all, like, just write something down and I hold it up and it says, just because you can't take care of a pet doesn't mean I can't. And then fold it back and put it back in my pocket. Um, wow. Mr. Rittens will pop bite. out and just chip, not bite him hard, but like... I bite him before he bites me. <laughs> Alright, so um, Flo, how are you feeling this morning? <laughs> the, start, the start of the turning... All this information that's coming down, uh, everything that's been happening, how are you feeling? What's, what's going on in Flo's like, world? Uh, she's focused but overwhelmed. Um, guys, I need to get out of this house. Bah? Yeah, yeah, Sarah, that was pretty nice. <laughs> what? Well, you need okay. to chill. <laughs> What? Why? Okay, Maybe we can just, just for this moment. It, it, it's... Why don't Why don't we return our clothes and um, take a walk, and then uh, maybe later in the day or later in the turning. Um, we can find a nice private place to talk about our next moves and the fact that the shining hand wants to speak to us. Because I don't think we're all quite getting the import of this. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, um, and maybe Tennille can help kind of uh, elaborate, but the Shining Hand is the direct advisor to the Archon Radiant. Um, Felissa Fane is the current Shining Hand, um, and generally handles all the day-to-day -day nuance, local security, um, very, very powerful person, like second-in-command of the Reach. 
That's so cool. I don't really know actually, but is is uh, Soli does it kind of shut its gates during uh, the midwinter or mid years turning? Is that like a big old festival? No one goes in and out, or actually, I don't um, you wouldn't know, but uh, maybe some of those who are local might be able to. Uh, normally, it's not a shut gates kind of situation. There is a festival and parade. Um, but uh, as you encountered during the entrance, um, that there is a gate fee both in and out. And you also encountered some of the sort of screening situation that was happening, you know, if you recall, um, some of the guard captains there kind of grilling and uh, viewing, turning away certain individuals or suspicious looking folk or southern heritage folk, um, that kind of stuff. So current climate's a little different than maybe what other people are familiar with in the past. I would also caution if we go shopping, we don't have a good sense, good source of income right now. So if we say needed to leave to go to Cerebelle, uh, we might not be able to pay the gate tax. Yes, they're just, just, you know, some budget. Yes, we can probably... Well, though Galen did say he wanted to provide resources, but I don't know how you would feel about that. I'd rather not. That's fair, I think. I think he said alone, rather than direct resource. Mm-hmm. Um, A type of resource. Yeah. I mean, I suppose America, if, we, we're green. if we we go out and die and never come back, then we don't have to repay it. That's right. It's like yeah. student loan. No. Speaking of... Yeah. Uh, Too close. We step in front of a moving wagon going through the city, then all of a sudden... Wah. Right. Yeah. Yes, though, I, I knew some many lenders... That, anyway, uh, not important. Um, I would like to spend the mid-years turning with my family, just in case we get ourselves into more trouble and can't come back for the next holidays or I think back. that playing it um, quiet for the next few turnings is probably smart and uh, no offense blue but you're still looking blue not green <laughs> <laughs> um, what you no, say so blue under the gills something like that <laughs> do, do you have gills it's a matter of speech. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just not so sure if we know anything about this one. Is it racist if I say that to a water genasi? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's speciesist at this point. <laughs> if you have to ask! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Renatus will uh, kind of put a parcel out on the... Are we still in the... Do we go down to, to like a, a breakfast or something with the Galen? Where are we right now? Um, so you descended the stairs and was in the sort of main entrance hall foyer kind of area, 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 jeez, um, that's, uh, the area area that, um, Uncle Galen, uh, Galen Kalinara was kind of accosting slash informing you, uh, about the situation. Uh, you got the sense that he had, like, been out and had come back and then went, um, about his business, so, um, but you have not gotten breakfast or anything like that um there was nothing like brought up to you or anything um but at the moment you were just sort of staying there um and chatting in the sort of entryway area at the base of the stairs um but for now i think that's probably where we're going to start ending uh you know bringing the session to a close uh it seems like you guys have a laundry list of things it seems like we've got possibly a shopping yeah. investigation and follow-up session uh, next session, at least the start of it, plus a few uh, forthcoming meetings, it seems like. Um, so maybe have a good idea of what you want to accomplish during the, uh, that period or things you're looking to buy. Um, it's a good time to distribute uh, group funds and magic items and all that kind of stuff. So we'll take care of that and hit the ground running with the next session. So thanks, you guys, uh, for being here and for being back. It's nice to be back with everybody. And thank you, everybody, for uh, watching us there at home. Um, this has been uh, Dragon Poet Society, and you can find us on Instagram and um, other social medias. We're going to be on YouTube uh, here with this upload here pretty soon. Um, so keep a lookout for that. And please share it and like it and all that kind of stuff to uh, help us grow. And thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a good night. Have a good night, guys. Take care.